Welcome to the Austin All Day Podcast. This is episode 10, and we are here with our very first pastry chef, Dylan Cleary of Italic. I had a lot of fun doing this podcast. I hope you guys all enjoy listening in. Sit back, grab a drink, and check it out. I don't know if I've ever heard my voice on a microphone. Who was just talking about that? Mm, um, I think I think uh, was, Chef Phil was yeah. saying that everyone doesn't like their voice, uh, right. maybe, possibly, right? right? Well, what I, do you think? I like my voice. Sounds okay, right? Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, I, I. It sounds different in my head, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it, when it's going through the mics and it's coming through here, it's yeah, sounds kind of nice. Yeah. yeah. And my man's a sound. He's, he's a sound a, guy. He's not among other things, but yeah, yeah, yeah. he's into sound. Music? One of his buddies bring, builds uh, speakers, like oh. big speakers. Yeah. Like for amps? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah? And stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know anything about that stuff, though. But that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so his buddy does that, and he does, mm-hmm. what does he do? Does he play any instruments? You know, I don't know. So so not regularly? Not regularly. You're, not in front of me yet. You're man. Yeah. Okay. It's new. We it's, just met two months ago. You met two months ago? Yeah, I think okay. two months ago. Uh-huh. Pastry chef. <laughs> Dylan, Pastry chef. Dylan Cleary. Here I am. Yes, here you are. <laughs> It, two months ago, you met your man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah? Paul. That's, His name's Paul. Paul. Uh-huh. And as as far as I know, you guys are ready to... to we're, we're Yeah, we're taking off. We're fleeting. taking off. Uh-huh. Fleeting. Well, I don't want to call it like fleeting, but, you know, like on to the next adventure. On to the next adventure. Yeah. So out of Austin and on to, or where to? The Pacific Northwest, Oregon. Okay. All right. Mountains. Tiny little mountain town out of the city, mm-hmm. away from the people. Going to go back to the roots, learn how to farm. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hopefully, I'm going to find a farm with, like, veggies and goats. Yeah. And then they make goat cheese. And that's, then there's a restaurant on the farm. You're going like to look dream. for that specifically. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Dream. <laughs> so I can learn how to grow veggies. Yeah. I can still bake. And I can learn how to make goat cheese. Any gardening right now at all? No. Nothing? No. Mm. I move around here too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like since I've been, in, I don't know. Every time I move into a city, yeah, I never stay in a spot for more than like, definitely more than a year. But sometimes it only lasts like six months. <laughs> so you <laughs> have you been out there to find a spot? Uh uh-uh, uh no, I've never even been to Oregon. Wow. I have family close by, and my father is from Northern California, so I've. Been to Northern California a bunch of times. But this is kind of on a whim of mm-hmm. what you've heard mm-hmm. about. Yeah. Not exactly on a whim. It's kind of a circumstance happened to the stars aligned and everything kind of fell into place because I was actually looking into moving to this little town that we're moving to, probably moving to, uh, before I met Paul. Okay. And then he had been living up there for the so past like there. two years, yeah. Nice. So, um, but he's from San Antonio, so he comes back for the winter because it's cold up there. <laughs> so, where are you from? St. Louis originally. St. Louis. Yeah, St. Louis, Missouri. She missed those winters, right? No, not at all. Not not at all. <laughs> yeah. Gets Baseball you. is what I miss. Oh yeah, baseball uh-huh. fan. The Cardinals. Yeah, I mean, growing up in St. Louis, you can't not be a Cardinals fan. There like you go. Cardinals and the Blues for hockey. And the bl- yeah. oh, okay, and the blues. Uh-huh. Yeah, I thought yep. you were music, but yes, hockey. Yeah, <laughs> hockey's. I don't think hockey's as big down in Texas. No, and it's too all. hot down here. Yeah, but they, nothing, I mean, it's nothing indoors, freezes right? here. Yeah. yeah, but you can Oh, you can't play Texans in the winter. Can't even sit through a hockey game. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. It's freezing it's inside of cold. a hockey, <laughs> whatever tournament thing. What's it called? A, a stadium. Stadium. There yeah. you go. Yeah, that's hockey stadium. Called. Well, they do it in like the uh, the basketball stadiums a lot of times. The hockey, do they? They freeze rings. over the floors? That's well, cool. they do that for the Bulls stadium. Oh, okay. The Bulls and then underneath the Blackhawks play, they like rip off the floor. I had no idea. I don't know. They may have changed <laughs> since then, but I do know that, that it was like that once upon a time. <laughs> yeah. So how long? You were in St. Louis and then... I was in St. Louis, born and bred St. Louis, uh, and then college came and I didn't want to go, so I partied a little bit in St. Louis. And so then, all the way till, till college in St. Louis. Yeah. I was 21 when I left. Okay. And uh, then I moved to New Mexico. My stepsister's family is all from New Mexico, Albuquerque, uh-huh. 
uh, is where I landed and went to college there because that's what you do and uh, studied psychology and philosophy and was like double majoring and I was going to minor in criminal justice and be one of those forensic psychiatrists to see if interesting crazy people could be rehabilitated or not. Wow. That's so what I wanted to do. You get a little passionate about that? Maybe? I love crazy people. Yeah. Okay. Well, I love people in general. What but about the idea of rehabilitating? You love that they're crazy, but you're like, we can get Well, you. I mean, the government says rehabilitating, so that's the word they oh, okay. use. But like, yeah. uh, you know, it's like where it's... What got me about it is what made people crack, you know, because everybody there's there's like the nature versus nurture in psychology. You know, it's like where you come from and what you're born with, you know. Right. And a lot of those uh, psychological disorders, for lack of a better term, um, imbalances is what I like to consider it as. But it's all chemical inside your brain. Right. So that's interesting, right? Mm hmm. It's not like a choice at all. No, not really. And then there's, I think that there's things that people that happen to people that either like make them go down one way or another, you know, kind of thing. It's like community support and everything like that. No, it's yeah, just like definitely. Everything, you know, so. Yeah, like you, we could have the craziest person you're in front of, but they just let us. You, you would uh, never know. Yeah, circumstances let them right there and everything was good. Yeah. You know how many narcissists are in the kitchen? <laughs> yeah, well, I've seen a few. <clears throat> so what steered you off that course? Because mm. that sounds interesting. It's super interesting, but I didn't want to work for the government. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. For the rest of my life. I wanted to be able to that makes have sense. a little more freedom in my life. And uh, then I thought about being a therapist and just like... You know, working with people and you could probably do that in the kitchen. I could totally. I do do that in the you kitchen. Do like, do that. <laughs> I mean, not intentionally, but it's just. I mean, I like people. I like to talk to people. I yeah. like hearing people's stories. So it's interesting to me. You know, definitely. And people will talk if you listen. So. Yeah, that's true. If you're li- <laughs> no, it's it means a lot when somebody's talking and you just listen to them. And you actually listen to the words that are coming out of their mouth. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so. You didn't want to work for the government. You're in New New Mexico. Mm-hmm. Didn't want to work for the government. I had always worked in kitchens. I, my first job was at an ice cream shop when I was like 15 or 16 years old and, okay. um, in St. Louis. And then always worked as a front of the house, you know. Yeah. Because that's where the money's at. Yeah. And, um, and people. I love people. Sure. So love doing that. Did that. Was doing that in New Mexico through college and uh, working at a diner and loving it and uh kept asking them to put me in the kitchen and because so i wanted want, to bake you had niche for it? oh mm-hmm. baking okay yeah i've always loved baking baking's my my it's my therapy it's my everything since, since forever <laughs> mm-hmm. i tr- attempted to bake my first cake when i was five years old How did it- <laughs> man i have a five-year-old if she was baking a cake i, I mean with assistance yes I don't sort think of? I let no? my mom help me very much. No, I mean I'm pretty. Uh, I'm fiercely independent and yeah. have and came out of the womb that way, um, which is hard for my cancer mother to cope with sometimes. But love you, mom. Um, she, yeah, I I said I wanted to bake a cake, and she was like, okay, here's a recipe, and I was like, no, I don't need that. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> So I just put things in a bowl and then put it in the oven and baked it for like an hour and nothing Voila. happened nothing. and nope, still a soppy mess. And my mom pulled it out and was like, honey, I don't think anything's going to happen. I think it's as done as it's going to be, you know? And I, she said, I just looked at it and said, well, that didn't work. And like, when you were done with it or you <laughs> done, went at it again? Walked away yeah. and like came back another day, you know, Yeah, yeah. Um, when I had thought about it more. But, yeah, I mean, I remember making pancakes with my girlfriends every morning when we had sleepovers and stuff pancakes in high school. I love pancakes. Um, so many different kinds of pancakes. Uh, cinnamon and pancakes. That's the, that's that's the good. secret. Yeah. That's good. That's the secret. <laughs> what? Uh, so what? So always, always pastry baking? Always baking. I've oh. always baked for my own, like, therapy. Every time, like, I had a breakup, every time I was happy, every time mm, my okay. friends had anything going on. It's like, thera- like therapeutic. Yeah, it was just, like, what I did to make myself feel good, you know? Yeah. So when you're asking to go in the back of the house, uh-huh. 
and it's for specifically for baking because a lot of times you might not have mm-hmm. a choice mm-hmm. when you get back there. But did you get to start? Eventually, yeah. So I had to. But you didn't like the cooking. <laughs> I had at to all? bribe them. Yeah. Not really. No, okay. I've never really been into cooking. Um, it's it's funny. It makes me. It gives me more anxiety cooking than it does baking. Yeah. Which is most opposite for all the cooks that I've ever met. Oh, you yeah. know, I could see <laughs> baking's like a specific. Yeah, thing it's you're chemistry. To it's yeah. science. You know, so there's there's specific things that you have to do um, with specific ingredients, or else they'll do weird things, and it won't come out the way you want it to come out. Whereas yeah. in cooking, it's kind of like you can go with the flow as you're doing it the whole time, and so therefore there's more variation for like if you get halfway through and you're like, oh, I don't really like where this is going. I can kind of switch it up and like move it this way, you know. Yeah. Um, whereas in baking, it's like you kind of mix it and put it in the oven and see what happens most of the time, you know? Right. Um, but there are a lot of things once you understand the ingredients and the chemistry of the ingredients and what each part is playing in the whole situation, then you can kind of manipulate your... So you kind of like with certain ingredients, they kind of like connect just kind of like certain like herbs or, you know, connect. Yeah. 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 Same same sort of. Totally. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So you, you bribed them and you get you get to. I did. I did. I brought them mini cheesecakes for like three months. Okay. And uh... You're like, see, I can do it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mini cheesecakes. That's good. I, I heard like somebody asking for those. Cheesecakes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> those would go a long way here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and at first they were like, "We can't put you in the kitchen. You'll be a distraction." And I oh, was wow. like, "Oh, because you're been in the front of the house." Because I'm a female. Oh, and I'm you're a, a female. And I'm like a pretty girl or whatever, okay. you know? <laughs> yeah. So, uh... I love how they just, like, bluntly I, have told you that. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a shock to me, honestly. And I kind of looked at my manager and said, do you want to rephrase that, you know? Okay, so as the manager, is this, this is at the diner? Mm-hmm. So there's not, like, is there a chef at the diner? No. Okay, it's no. just kind of a... There was, like, a, a lead line guy, yeah. Gottwald, who'd been there for... I don't know, 15, 20 years or something like that. And then yeah. his, you know, sidekick, Nico. Um, Nico. Mm-hmm. Love, love that name, actually. I know. I like it, too. Nicholas. But he went by Nico, and it suited him very well. And Gottwald, I think his first name was Chris, but everybody called him Gottwald. You know, it was his last name. But anyway, those two guys kind of ran the kitchen, and then they had, like, their little dudes that, you know, came and went. But yeah. they were kind of the longstanding... Um, they would. They were who I considered to be the chefs, if there were, sure. you know, chefs. The guys in charge. Yeah. Running, yeah. running the show. Yeah. yeah. So the manager says that was, which is a bold statement. It was a bold statement. And but, did you, uh, did you have any kickback with that, or did you just kind of roll with? It? So I just kind of rolled with it and was yeah. like, "Are you sure you want to say that to me right now, or something?" I said something clever like that, you know, and and he was like, "Well, let me think about it," and I was like, "Okay." think about it and then like the next week he was like i want to put you on the schedule in the kitchen like two days a week and thus baking and thus begins started making pies and brownies and and was it everything you dreamed of it was everything i dreamed of and more really that's awesome (laughs) it felt great it felt great to pump out like you know making 12 pies at a time it's like you don't do that in your home kitchen it's like what are you going to do with all those pies you know yeah exactly um so it felt great, and I loved it. I loved every minute. And then I just kind of inched my way in yeah, and got on the prep, savory prep, did that. And uh, the line worked brunch. So you, you mm-hmm. were you were a pastry, you know, cook, chef. Yeah, I was like while, their baker. I while was you're their on the baker. line there. Yeah. So and you had so, specific duties that were like, yes. or were you actually like, you know, on the egg station or something? No, so it was like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I baked. Did okay. all their baking, and then I had a weekend baker that kind of answered to me, who came in on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Saturday I did prep, savory prep there, and made the special for Sunday. Every once in a while, I had to come in and like bake off the special on Sunday, work for like two hours or whatever. And then, but when you're on the line, what's that look like? 
Tuesday, Thursday, it was like flipping burgers, making liver and onions. Okay, and so yeah. I was the grill cook. I was a short order cook. And what do you think about that? I liked it. I you liked like it. it. I mean, as I... As long as you have your, your... It was fun. Honestly, it was fun. And... Uh, <coughs> can be, I, right? Yeah. That's when I started dreading my hair. And because uh, I didn't have to be when a pretty girl anymore. It's been, it's been a minute then. They turned six in August. Six. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But I hadn't cut my hair in like eight years. So they're quite long now. But yeah, last August they turned six. Yeah. Um, so yeah, six years ago, I guess, was when I started. That's crazy. Okay. It feels like less time. But, but yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> it feels like less time. Well, six years, a lot can happen, right? Yeah. So that's New Mexico. Mm-hmm. That's New Mexico. And so then I'm interested when you, did you come straight to Austin? I came straight to Austin. Uh, I quit school, had a, what my mom calls a coming to Jesus talk about going to college because I was skipping class and picking up shifts at the diner and, yeah. and you know I was like mom I'm wasting my money and this isn't what I want to do and she was like she's, okay what do you want to do and she's cool with that though. she's totally cool with it she loves it she was like yeah. do what you want that makes you happy you know and my dad always said like find something that you love doing and then figure out how to make money doing it you know yeah and so that's what I'm doing you know nice yeah, so I moved to Austin in, I guess it was five years ago, August. So was that like 2013? Something October, like that. October 2013, yeah. yeah. And got a job at Arrow, which okay. is now closed, but right, Elm yeah. Group, you know. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. was, I, I wasn't familiar, but what was it? Uh, French. It was okay. a French restaurant, and it was on West 6th, right by uh, that Walton staple at uh, Nueces, 6th and little Nueces. Strip there? It was. It's right on the corner of Six and Nueces. Okay. Like right next to Walton's. I don't know what it is now, but they have a big mural on the side of the wall. It used to be all white building when it was Arrow. Super classy. It was. We served food until two a.m. Yeah. So we got a lot of business, and my mom didn't understand why I wasn't home until four or five in the morning. And your mom is. It was here. Mm-hmm. She was here, so I moved in with her. Okay. So <laughs> when you told her, I'm. I'm not feeling school. You guys kind of maybe had a talk. Why don't you come check this out? Yeah, she was like, well, you have to move someplace where there's food because there's no good food in Albuquerque except for, you know, Albuquerque food, which is yeah. it's fantastic, you know. Uh, New Mexican food is fantastic. But um, there wasn't a huge food scene there where I could really delve in and, like, hone yeah. my skills and, you So what did you think after you got here and you were in Arrow? I liked Arrow. I liked Arrow a lot. I learned how to make chicken liver mousse there. Um, so you're p- pastries there. <laughs> I was doing, I was like, bake, I was plating desserts okay. at night, um, doing like very minimal pastry prep. It was like mostly finishing stuff that the morning prep person had done, you know. That's a nice spot, right? Yeah, like measing things out for them in the morning and stuff like that. But I learned how to quenelle there. I, like, learned how to brulee properly there. I mean, I really, like, I learned how to be serious about what I was doing, you know. Because before that, it was just, like, throwing pies together and flipping burgers, you know. Yeah, that's that's a good, like, it's an eye-opening experience when you start yeah. to, like, get kind of passionate about it. or Yeah, and it, like, really sparked something in me that um, I was like, okay, this is, what it, this is, like, what I've been looking for. Like, this is dope. I can do something that I absolutely love doing every single day and continue to learn more and more and more. Yeah. And I can make money doing it, you know? Definitely. So I can spend all my time doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's great, right? <laughs> Long hours, bring you know, save the money by just keep working. Yeah. So yeah. did you did you stay there till they closed, or did you go somewhere? No, I was only there for nine months, I yep. think nine or ten months, and then um, I decided to go to school. So I went to culinary school at a uh, Escoffier here, and there's one here and there's one in Boulder, but then all the rest of them are in France, I believe. And how did you like Escoffier? It was all right. I mean... Did you take a lot away from it? Not particularly. I made some really good connections there. Um, I got a lot of confidence there, you know. And And so it's 
it's uh, the technique is. I mean, how do how do they how is it? I mean, in a nutshell, how do they do, run they, it there? It's a six month program, so it's oh, real it's fast. Only, it's six months. That's mm-hmm. quick, for their yeah. pastry program, it's only six months, and uh, I think their savory program's like eighteen okay. months, and they do way more cool stuff than we got to do. Like savory people go to the farm and like, you know, actually, uh, I think they got more exposed to a wider variety of things than the pastry program did. Um, but six months sounds kind of like, a- enticing when you're like, yeah, yeah. I'll get back out there. Yeah, 20 grand, six months, let's do it, you know? Whew, that's a hefty price tag, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, grants, loans, all the things. Oh, but, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, there's a lot of things that you can do to pay for school. I mean, there's lots of scholarships that you can get for just, like, writing essays and stuff. So. Nice. And I'm sure you... Yeah, I figured all that out. So Cool. Uh, got a little loan that I'm paying off, but it's nothing crazy, so... It's manageable. Totally manageable. And But, um, but it, you had to have taken... You at least have it under your belt, but did you I have it under my belt. Some I, I got to I got to demand a little bit more money an hour after that because yeah. I was certified, you know? It, like... The key is... is like, the I was, I'm bona fide, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pay me. It, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but the thing, the most, the thing that really um, got me about school was bread, because I had never, I was never interested in bread. I never even thought about bread before. Yeah. Um, and then we did like a whole. I think it was only like three weeks or four weeks or something. Three weeks of bread and. I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't bake bread oh. for the life of me. I could not bake bread. And did that light a fire under your ass? Oh my now, God. now you it know how, right? It bugged me. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know how to bake bread. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I just, it just didn't click. Nothing clicked. And so it became like a personal challenge of mine to. And now, what, n- what was it when you put the pieces of the puzzle and you take it apart and you what was it that you were missing there that wasn't making sense um or do you i know? think did it just click? it was a lot of things it was a lot of things i didn't understand the chemistry of what was happening um i didn't I, understand I yeah i didn't understand how many things uh really go into it because with bread it's like it's everything and it's like mainly yeast right Yeast is your leavening ingredient. You We're know? talking. Yeah. I'm totally green on the. the <laughs> okay, so that's the leavener, but it can age, right, and be. Mm-hmm. Act yeah, up I mean it's alive. It's a living organism. Well, I know, like with the batter, like just like pancakes, like yeah. talking about like uh, completely elementary about it. If you just keep whipping pancake batter, like eventually it's all. Or or like if you play with pizza dough. Yeah. You know, and then it, eventually it's real tough. It turns. Yeah. You can't even play with it anymore. Right. Right. Because so, you overdevelop the gluten in it. That's so the gluten, it's a whole, and that. Yeah. So there's the gluten. See, mm-hmm. bake, baking. That's it's all. It's, it's it's over my head. So that's gluten. Science. It has nothing to do with yeast. <laughs> gluten. I mean, they're all related. They it's connect. all yeah. I mean, they're all just like every living organism is connected and yeah, and yeah. feeds off of each other and you know, um, so yeah. But it's yeah. I mean, it, it's a living thing and it's going to do what it wants to do. Right. You know, and you're just kind of there to help it do go in the direction you want it to go. Basically, you is know. That, um, to me, that's real cool. And bread is it's awesome. It's so cool. It's so cool. It's so, so cool. That intrigues you a it's, lot. Yeah. If I could bake bread every day for the rest of my life, I would. Nice. Yeah. Well, you might be able to. Wake up at 3 a.m. Every day. Don't even care. Don't <laughs> even care. I would love it. Yeah, yeah. Somebody might be listening and they might be co- recruiting you shortly for I that. will bake your bread. <laughs> I, I will wake up bread. at 3 a.m. and bake your bread. <laughs> Have you been over to, uh, the, the? I mean, you've been to Easy Tiger. Yeah, Easy Tiger. That's Elm Group. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So, and that's. Or I don't think it is anymore. Any, I think they just split off okay, yeah, recently, but it was. Right. Yeah. When I worked for Arrow, it was. Like that's 24 Diner. Mm-hmm. 24 Diner, Irene's, Italic. Italic. Yeah. And then they have a cookbook at the cookbook, library. Yeah. And then they have a um, Italic at Fairground as well. Oh, yeah, the Fairgrounds. Mm-hmm. So. Brain fart. Where were we with? Uh, I don't know. We're jumping all around. Okay, let's go back. So I come here. Oh, I, I, Easy Tiger. <laughs> Easy I, Tiger. I was just curious. <laughs> it's, it's like the the cool. Like when I go in there, it's like it smells so good. It's bread porn. Uh, Is that a thing? Bread porn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> And the oh, new yeah. one. That's why I kind of brought it up. I this haven't been the, up to the new one. The new I don't one get is, up north much, you know. 
Yeah, so, I understand that. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's in a weird spot. Is it? Well, it's right off thirty five. Okay. And it's, I don't know. When I go there, I, I, I guess the plan would be that Austin will grow out that way. That's what they're trying to do, and I think it's working. I think it's slowly going to do that. I mean, when Barley Swine went up there, um, I'm burning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When they opened, I think a lot of other places kind of fly rights next door. Now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They have a like ice cream there too. You know that the that local. place right next to it, the Frisco went out of business, and mm-hmm. they were like in business for fifty plus years, mm-hmm. which is, of course, it's sad, but it's going to happen. But that's a long run. It's a long run, and it's kind of you question when you see something like that go away. I mean, it's lots of different things. I mean, I know that there's there's people in town. I'm sure that. Like signed leases for twenty twenty five years. Oh sure. Back in the nineties, you know, whatever. And yeah. They're still paying those things, sure. and then the lease comes up, and Austin prices just skyrocket. Right, so right. we you see know. that all over, just drive around the east side right now. Mm-hmm. Take a quick uh, meander over there. Mm-hmm. So hit up uh, Jacoby's when you're over there too. Jacoby's, mm-hmm. good crew too. <laughs> I like those guys. And Griselda's is across the street there. I haven't been there. I'll go there. Ooh, chef, if I have chef time, Alan, if I have time. <laughs> Alan, they they pride on him okay. lately, according to their Instagram. They like nice, him, nice. and he's cool. Cool. He's gonna hop on here too. Yeah, don't. <laughs> definitely. Um, uh, what what else is? Yeah, the east side is just east side's great. I lived on the east side for a little while. Where um, at? Where about? I was at. We were at Fifth and Robert T. Martin. Is. Okay. Yeah, and like right behind the railroad tracks, and there's that hi hat was like is right on the yeah. corner. So, do you, did you ever go in there for like it's like a mm-hmm. lot of jazz, right? Yeah, beers. Uh, yeah, they have music yeah. there and uh, beers and burgers. You know, is it all? They was it always open too. for lunch? Is that all? Cause it's thought, not always open for lunch. Okay. It's not every day. It's open for lunch. I think I don't even know. I thought I saw it was open recently, and I never noticed it was mm-hmm. open for lunch before. So yeah, I think maybe. On the weekends or something? I don't know. Yeah. It was during the week. That's why yeah. I was like, wait a minute. I, thought, I don't know. I thought, but the east side is like just littered with awesome places yeah, to eat. Awesome. Uh, east Side King, my favorite trailer is over there. Yeah. The Tycoon have, trailer is good, but sometimes I can't take the heat. You know, it's pretty hot. Really? No, <laughs> yeah. Not a spicy? No. I love spicy food, but, but that's too hot. Sometimes you it's heard like it here, go there. If you like I spice. still want to be able to like taste Enjoy everything yeah. throughout the entire dish. You know, sure. so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not like sweating bullets two bites in. Right. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Where my tongue goes numb, and I'm just like, well, what am I eating? Right. 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 Uh-huh. <laughs> But, so, yes, we, 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 uh, sorry. We digress. I, I know. It happens with me all the time. That's it's all fine. good. That's all good. <laughs> but we were, you were at Arrow. Arrow closes. Well, Arrow didn't close Arrow while didn't you were close there. while I was there. Arrow but, closed quite a bit after I left, but, um. I got an easy time because we were school. talking about bread. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about bread, but went to school, um, piqued my interest on bread. Um, my boyfriend at the time was a cook. We met at Arrow. Um. He's no longer in Austin, but I don't know. Podcast, Jack, what's up? <laughs> um, he's got his own little spot up in Ohio right now, which is really dope. Super oh, stoked for him. Restaurant. Yeah, but it's like a little spot in a in a bar up cool. in his hometown. Nice. Living his dream, love it. That's but good. he was really good at bread, so then it became like a competition, you know. Oh. So you figured it out. I figured it out figured by it working out. at Odd Duck when I went to Odd Duck. But that's, but that's skipping a couple steps. Sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm interested. Where are they? I mean, your boy, your he's gone. He's opened his place, but you guys start kind of going back and forth with recipes. Uh-uh. Oh no, this was when we were together. We were together for like two and a half years, me and Jack, um, when I first moved here. But uh, so yeah, we were living together, and he was really good at baking bread, and yeah. I sucked at it. Sure. And he. Um, so in- Instead of taking tips, you guys are competing? Yeah, we started competing because I wanted to be better than him, (laughs) you know, and he wanted to be better than me. And that's fine. It was friendly competition. It was healthy competition. You know, it was fun for both of us. Uh, We had a good and and we had a lot of bread, a lot of really good bread, too. But, um, yeah, he would always bake bread and I would be jealous. So um, what kind of bread? He would just like put. Like not even just like instant yeast and flour and salt and water and 
just smoke it in his smoker. He and, well, that sounds good. It was really after good. After it smoked in a smoker, it was really right? Good. You throw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> what what would you call that at the end of it? I don't know. Just, dinner bread. It was just like okay. rolls. You know, it was like dinner yeah. rolls. It tasted like dinner sure. rolls. You know. I'm thinking like and I'm like I said like sourdough. Uh huh. I said I don't know. But I'm yeah. Like, oh, sourdough. Sourdough is my ciabatta. Yeah, <laughs> sourdough is my jam, and ciabatta is on that same. It's the, those are like the artisanal bread. Yeah, so that's yeah. what it's artisanal because it's like handmade, handcrafted. I have this you know? image of Easy Tiger on Sixth Street just like plastered in my mind while we're talking right now. <laughs> it's, it's just because the, they're known. They're known for their bread. But yeah. odd duck and sour duck should should also sour duck market. Mm-hmm. Okay, they cool. have it going. On, man. So Odd Duck is mm-hmm. on uh, Lamar, mm-hmm. and they're mm-hmm. they're like s- new American, Southern, whatever. I mean, they just do whatever they want to do, and the chefs over there are so awesome. Uh, Bryce Gilmore is the chef over there. Yeah, he's amazing. Cool. One of my favorite chefs I've ever worked for, ever. And uh, his um, chefs also that work for him, uh, Mark Bewley, is. The most insanely knowledgeable man I've ever met in my entire life about food and everything. I mean, if I, I would ask him a question, he would be like, I don't know. And then 10 minutes later, he'd come back and tell me, like, the chemical compounds of the whatever I was talking about and, like, where it came from and how it came to be and, like, nice. just everything, you know. So he's amazing. And he really uh, got me excited about bread cool. when I was working there. He He taught me a lot. Yeah, that's, yeah, definitely. that's cool. So these guys are hands on with the pastries and the and everything. Yeah, I mean they had a they had an amazing pastry chef Susanna um, when I was there, but she's off doing other awesome things um, with her hubby. I think they're in California now, but um, uh, yeah, I, they they weren't pastry chefs, you know, they were savory chefs. But in my opinion. <laughs> Every really good chef is well rounded. Mm-hmm. Knows okay. how to bake. Yeah, you know. Yeah, no, and that's why I, I was curious if they yeah. were just kind of letting you do your thing and turning the other way. Or, but when you say he's like coming back ten minutes later with this, you know, detailed yeah, answer. Yeah, it was or something. like if he didn't if he didn't know something if he wasn't teaching me something we were both learning something. You know, that might have added to the uh, appreciation for mm-hmm. working for those guys. Yeah, I mean they're they're an amazing company to work for, and the food that they do is just awesome. It's completely farm to table, um, and they use everything, like every little thing. There was no trash there. Is that the first experience you had with a kitchen to work like that? Yes, that yeah. actually did it. That yeah. actually like successfully and was that rub off on you. Totally, totally. Yeah. yeah, I don't throw away stocks now if I make. Uh, Stocks. <laughs> right. Yeah. Stocks. Stocks. <laughs> yeah, but like the stems and stuff, you know, I just put them in my in my chicken stock or vegetable yeah. stock or whatever, you know. Definitely. And uh and reutilize that. Even eggshells, you can uh bake off eggshells until they're brown and crumble them up and put them in your compost. Okay, in the compost. Put them right I, in the I garden, was... you know. Okay, right I, in the compost. I thought that was going somewhere else and I was like, wait a minute, bake <laughs> oh. put them in your bread. <laughs> Okay, so why not just throw straight up eggshells in the garden? Just uh, curious. So the, the baking releases the nitrates, and then yeah. it it um, goes into the soil. Okay, I have a garden out mm-hmm. back. It's nothing to to brag about. <laughs> actually, the actual construction is two two uh, six six by six two foot um, two foot high raised beds, mm-hmm. but uh, one of them. It's got really good soil. One of them not so good. Mm-hmm. One of them just has rosemary and oregano going. Okay. Really strong. When you do go and yeah. move and mm-hmm. you start, it's the soil. Just start there. Don't It's skimp. all about the soil, yeah. Don't skimp on the soil. I have a few friends who are really into permaculture. And um, part of the reason is why I'm going up there is to to, to learn how to grow food. Yeah. You know, um, and learn where it all comes from so sure my mm-hmm. daughter and i 
we we did that three years ago. We started, mm-hmm. and it was really good, but it got out of control. It mm-hmm. was so good, <laughs> and then you know it grew into each other, and it was too out of control. It was hard to keep up with, so things started to die. Mm-hmm. But it was good for the 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 most part, right? Um, and that was a lot to do with tomatoes, and I, I can't remember the uh, terms, but there's like a kind that will continue to grow. Yeah, and they and, like take over, right? Or there's a kind that like has a. Like it's supposed to grow to a certain point and stop. Right, right, right. So, I mean, obviously when you're in that uh, confined space, you pick the ones that's going to stop. But I didn't mm-hmm. know any of that. And I'm assuming I had, uh, you know, the Incredible Hulk of uh, gardens. <laughs> and it, it was crazy. But we, it was really nice, like, to just go out there and, like, pick, you know, rosemary, or, yeah. of course. and like It's a, super convenient to just have everything you need right in your backyard. And it's it's not only convenient, it was so fresh, uh-huh. like, just, like, sticky, all the herbs. Mm-hmm. It was like, yeah, this is lovely. It tastes completely different, too. It, like, there's so different. many more flavors going on. It's true. It's odd. Mm-hmm. It's, it's fresh. I think part of the reason is, like, you grow it, so you see it, like, seed to stem or whatever, you know, but um, it's... It's like cooking for other people, too. You know, when you cook for other people, it always tastes better. I Because you can't eat it. No, <laughs> because you see them enjoying it, and you, okay. like, relish in that, too. I think it's a whole experience, you know? That's definitely, yeah. that's definitely a common <laughs> theme amongst, you know, people who enjoy cooking. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's, has that kept you going? Because I know you. it's therapy. You love being mm-hmm, there. You mm-hmm. learn a lot. Odd Duck, Sour Duck. You didn't go to Sour Duck. Didn't go to Sour Duck. I was at... Um, so I, I know you said before, I went, Odd Duck. Yeah, so here's my little timeline. I went Arrow, school. I opened a Kirby Lane, working in front of the house okay. out in Westlake. That was fun. And then uh, got done with school and got a job at Vox Table, which is also no longer closed or yeah, no longer open. Bummer. Yeah. Well, do you know why they were called Vox? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, it's a voice around the table. It's vo- Vox is voice. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's like a, you know, talking around the table kind of. I always thought it had to do with the, the British amp. Oh, okay. The Vox, but right. I guess I'm, okay. <laughs> That's good to know because I, yeah. I was always wondering. They, yeah. they recently closed. Yeah, they recently closed. I don't know why. Um, Chef Joe was awesome. He was hilarious. And, uh. Such a character to work for me. He called me professional. I don't know. I, there was like that was your name. That was my name. Yeah. It was one day there was a, a, a chicken stock needed to be strained and uh, no one was doing it and I didn't have anything to do so I strained it and he was like be careful be careful don't don't like burn yourself you know and I was like don't worry chef I'm a professional and <laughs> and, that, and that was born and it stuck. <laughs> So he called me professional, yeah, and I was only there for like a few months, four months or something. Their pastry chef, when they opened, was not a very pleasant person to work for, nor was she okay. um, helpful to like, you know, me in any right. way, really. It wasn't. You weren't growing from. <laughs> no, and and she was a she was a bigger challenge than what was really necessary, I guess. So. Chef Joe is cool, though. And Chef I really Joe is wonder, awesome. Do you know yeah. what he's up to? I don't know what he's up to. Okay. I still have his number, though, I yeah, think. Should. I'm curious. <laughs> I mean, I wonder if he's going to open something else up. Yeah, I hope he does. I hope they didn't leave. His wife was from New Mexico, too, actually. Okay. Um, so, Vox, and yeah. I, I interrupted Vox 2. Vox 2, Uchi. I went to Uchi, yeah, because uh, when I got out of school, I got offered a job at Uchi, and I got offered a job at Vox, and I had so much fun. For pastry. Uh-huh, for pastry, and I had so much fun opening a restaurant with Kirby Lane that I wanted to do it again, so I chose to go with Vox and wait two months to work yeah. and until the restaurant opened and then do all the brunt work of setting up the kitchen and, you know... Pretty you much, like that. yeah, that was fun, and I wish I got to do like more recipe development, but I, I was way too green, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, well, Chef Michael Wake owns Funkadelic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of Funkadelic. I haven't. Well, I heard of it, but I haven't like oh, it's, been it, there. You it's know? cool. I haven't been yeah. there either, but I know uh-huh. uh, from reputable sources, mm-hmm. including Chef Michael Wake himself. <laughs> he was here last night. He is the coolest, and he also was like he started opening some places. Mm-hmm. For a little bit longer, but he really got into that. Like he like yeah, started to like seek fun. that out. Yeah. It's super fun because it's like it's a blank slate, you know, and you can take all these things that you've learned from other places and other experiences and put them together to, 
try and make a little successful baby. Yeah, know? that is it's neat, right? And there's there's also there's not like uh, these standards put in place that are over your head, like mm-hmm. you know, kind of like rules. Right. You like, create your own rules. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. And you see what works. And when you have people who are flexible and who are trying to um, create a culture, a certain culture, then you get to be part of that. You know. Definitely. So, so you end up at Uchi. So I end up at Uchi. And And, and how was that? I loved working for Uchi. I got my butt kicked working for Uchi. Um, Definitely, it was the most militaristic kitchen I've ever worked in. Sure. In a completely good way. Yeah. Um, I really, yeah, super disciplined. I mean, my coat had to be clean and not wrinkly. And I am. Not a not wrinkly person. I'm a very wrinkly person. So <laughs> that was a whole other thing for me, you know. And uh, you my knife had to that? be sharp. And I didn't have a. Sh- I didn't even have a knife at that point in time because I'm, oh I'm, I'm a baker. I don't need a knife. I don't need like a good knife, you know. I cut yeah. fruit and stuff. So how did? How, I want. I'm curious. Mm-hmm. Just uh, paint a picture of how someone tells if your knife is sharp. Uh, okay, so this is what I've always seen is the guys in the kitchen try and cut the hairs off their wrist. That's it. Well, That's it. So will someone come up and take your knife? Because you say your knife has to be sharp. Hell no. They never check my knives. They just assume that it's... Okay. That it's... And now I have a nice knife because I dated a cook and With he was their, like, you need a nice knife. I've seen your knife. Yeah. You've sharpened my knife. <laughs> yeah. Which, by the way, like sharper than it even was before I got it. Like, there it's go. never been... I was like cutting it and I was like, oof. Okay. Oh, good. Oof. I babied it a little bit. <laughs> it was but, very nice. So that, that knife stemmed from, like, Uchi. Yeah, I got that knife. I think Jack bought it for me for Christmas or something one year or my and birthday. did you, I'm sure, I mean, you kind of, it got ingrained in you, the importance of, like... Oh, yeah. He yeah. made sure of that. My ex-boyfriend, Jack. Okay, Because yeah. he was a cook, you yeah. know, and we were living together. It seems <laughs> when... Uh, well, myself included. When, mm-hmm. I, when I, so I'm into cooking, mm-hmm. but then I got into knives, mm-hmm. and for me, knives just like took control. Yeah, and they took the wheel, and yeah. I, like a sharp knife was like, I was way more concerned. Well, I mean, I mean, obviously. Mm-hmm. But so he, it sounds like he kind of he had was this, serious. Yeah, he he, he understood the importance of having a sharp knife. It and makes your day easier. Mm-hmm, it does. It makes everything easier, and I think even. I mean, even in pastry, it's hard. Like, I have I have a knife that's used for, like, cutting cakes and stuff that's not really... I mean, I keep it at 50-50, and it's just, like, not really... Like a like an actual chef knife? Yeah, it's, oh, like, okay. longer. I think it's, like, yeah. 10 inches or something like okay. that because I can cut cakes with it, so it's, yeah. like, really long, you know? Mm-hmm. But I don't really keep that one super sharp. Yeah, well, but, it doesn't need to be to go through batter mm-hmm. or, you know, dough. Or, right, you know, I mean, it's just... It's cake, mostly. Cake yeah. and fruit that I'm cutting, you know, and every once in a while, like, some... Zest, you know, like when I candy zest, you have to julienne yeah. it and stuff. So, um, but for that, I mean, when I julienne citrus, you, I use my good knife. <laughs> for sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But it's nice yeah. when it's sharp. It's nice. And when I cook at home, I use it. Um, when I go to my mom's and cook dinner with her on the rare, rare occasion that that happens. And yeah. I'll hopefully remember to bring my knife with me. And so stuff. you cook for her? Yeah, we cook together. I okay. mean, she's a she's a pretty decent cook, you know. I Good. mean, I learned she's so funny. She gets all anxious and nervous every time we she cooks dinner for me or something like. Oh, that. like if she's doing something wrong. She's like, oh, I just I just threw it together. Like I didn't I don't really know when to. Oh, because she she it's knows you have like a, a lot of experience yeah, in the kitchen. I guess you know, or I'm just sure. I'm around really good food all the time. So it's kind of cute, right? It's really cute. It's super endearing. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it, but she forgets that like she. She was the one that taught me how to do all this in the first place, you know, right, right. and who fed my desire to just explore and experiment and roll with it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no, that's good. Yeah, you should get there more often. Well, especially yeah. now. I know, I know. Well, yeah. I saw her today. Okay, because you're down to the wire, right? Uh-huh. Day off today? Is that what's no. going on? No, no, Day no. Off. Right. no, no. I worked this morning, um, and then. Yeah, tomorrow I have a double, and the next day I have a double, and then Sunday I'm off, and then Monday we leave, so. We're 45 minutes in-ish, and italic. (laughs) Italic is where I work in the morning right now, yes. Currently. And then my nighttime job is with the Peach Tortilla, with their catering company. Mm -hmm. You're on the social house? 
Uh, the, we meet at the social house sometimes, yeah, and I do prep there sometimes, uh, like savory prep there sometimes. Oh, go over to the peach tortilla. Um, I love the peach tortilla. Yeah, yeah. They have the the restaurant on Burnet. The, the, and the Bar Peach And now. then Bar Peach now, too. Uh-huh. They're, they're good crews with very good food in the yeah. airport, not to mention that. Yeah. You know, I love working for them. And catering, that's a whole... I do catering with them, so it's like a whole nother beast, you know? Yeah, I didn't know that was a current thing that you were... Okay, that's mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, it's my, it's my nighttime gig. It's yeah. my fun job. <laughs> so you go catering, uh, so you're all over the place, or you, you meet at Social House and then you go from there? If I, if I do, like, a lead shift, then I'll meet at the Social House, yeah, and then, like, take the van and all this all the gear, you know? Okay. Um, but uh, lots of the time I'll, I'm just a back-of-the-house, like, cook, you know? And Savory where cake. is that? At the Social House or...? It's everywhere. So we do a lot of weddings... So it's like all these venues, you need to just go wherever they need you to go, wherever okay. the venue's at. So um, I think I have one at Allen House, or I just had one at Allen House, yeah. um, which is just like an event center, you know. And, yeah. Um, lots of weddings. Nice. Lots of weddings. So you like catering? I love catering. Catering's cool. It's fun. It's always yeah. different, right? It's we, always and we've different. Had, we talked to, very briefly, but mm-hmm. Chef Joseph... He's from, you know, Contigo Catering. Yeah, yeah. And before that, we had the on Jeff fig. Beach. Yeah, and yeah, Royal Fig. Royal yeah. Fig, yeah. I yeah. didn't know much a lot about catering. I'm starting to understand it a uh-huh. little bit more. Um, it's actually a, a, a big focus in culinary school. Yeah. Um, but if you don't go into catering, you really don't get the hands-on experience. Right, So right. is this the first catering for you? It's the first real catering. When I was 19 and I was living in St. Louis, I was like a delivery driver for a catering company Okay. Um, for a little while while I was also working at a pizza place. So, um, But that was a long time ago, ages ago, before I ever got serious. Those were my partying days. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, this is the first time, this is the first full-service catering, too, yeah. uh, that I've ever done where you take a whole kitchen with you and set it up and has, go ham, you know, has, feed 300 people or something. Yeah, so. yeah. So at a wedding, um, like Joseph was saying, they kind of like stay in the background and let the the actual wedding shine. But when mm-hmm. you guys go there to maybe not a wedding, mm-hmm. do you guys like have someone present what's going on, like the food? It and- depends. It all depends on the client. Um, uh, the peach tortilla has a couple different ways that they kind of set up. There are events, depending on what the client wants. There's, oh, yeah. um, you know, you can just do past food, like past appetizers the whole time, cocktail service style kind of thing. Right. Um, where then you just have, like, servers walking around, you know. Yeah. Um, but there's also, like, they have, like, set stations where they set up certain things, you know, like a macaroni and cheese bar or, like, a poke bar or something like that, you know. Um, and then they, they do like full dinners, family style or like fully plated like dinners. So. Any kind of crazy, um, you know, bumps in the road that you've run into at, oh, a, ex, uh, yeah. at a catering? Totally. All the time. It yeah. happens more in catering than it has happened in the kitchen, I think, to me. Yeah. Um, this one time I was like, they were running late in the kitchen or I was running late or something. I don't know. But I had like zero time and, um... I go to load my food in, and the door to the Cambro opens, and my, like, pan of chicken or whatever it was fell out. I think it was chili. Yeah, I think I spilled, like, three quarts of chili on the ground or something. <laughs> was like... You were carrying three quarts of chili? Uh, there was six there, but, you know, yeah. I lost some of it. So. Oh, okay. Um, and just right, up, right there on the yeah, beautiful Yeah, right there on the green. pavement. Okay, mm-hmm. on the pavement. All right. Yep, right there in the parking lot. So that was, uh, that was awesome. That was at the event, too. Like, I had driven from... The social house to the event, and it, the door to the Cambro just opened, and it came sliding out. With Cambro, well, we have like a seal on lid on top, right? No, no, no. This is like a hot box Cambro thing, so it's got like a like a flap open front like door. Like an Alto Sham? That's what I'm thinking right now. I don't know what an Alto Sham is. It's no. got like a door that opens like this. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a hot box. Yeah, it's a hot box. Okay. And it has like little latches on the side, and this particular one only had one latch that was working, you know, yeah. and the other one was just like non-existent. Sure. So the one latch that was working ceased to exist But anymore. either way, <laughs> the chili's everywhere. Yeah, the chili's everywhere. And so, but I you mean, recoup, we right? coop, yeah, we recouped. It was fine. We got some more chili. I always, always saved. Yeah. Um, and I mean, there's always, it's just like, 
one more lesson to put out fires, you know? Yeah, yeah. Figure definitely. out how to figure something out whenever shit doesn't go the way you think it's going to go. Right. So. 100%. Mm-hmm. So these uh, skills you've acquired in the kitchen, uh-huh. I know you're talking <laughs> about moving. Um, yeah. And you're talking about a farm with, you know, specifically we have goat cheese on this farm. And mm-hmm. There's a couple other things. That, Some veggies, yeah. A restaurant would be nice so I could still, like, bake things. Baking. Okay, mm-hmm. that's what I was going to say. I, have you kind of done any research about, about where... Because this is unique because mm-hmm. you're leaving. Yeah. Austin, and yeah. this is, I guess, in a way. I mean, we're this is great that you're here, but it's, it's a kind yeah, of a like souvenir in, that you get like to take. In like three days, I'm leaving. <laughs> that quickly? Yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we leave. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Are you, you're driving, obviously. We're driving. Yeah, it's going to take like five days to get out there. I'm okay. super excited. Well, I'm excited <laughs> too, especially now that you've said that. That's that's crazy. Like the countdown is on. Uh, yeah, yeah, it has so, begun. Th- has there been research done? Um, I was doing research back in August when I thought I was going to be able to move like for, the first for time. Like bakery or just place Yeah, I mean, I was looking at little cafes that they have out there, what restaurants they have out there. I mean, there's not it's much. Like, it's a mountain town, you know. Um, there's not much. Wait, wait. Where where about are you moving? So to? near uh, Medford. It's like southwestern. Yeah, it's a tiny little town. Okay. In uh, southwest Oregon. So it's like an hour or two from the California border. It's like an hour or two from the coast. So you really are actually seeking a change of pace. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is not moving to Portland like... When- no. Okay. No, I'm not going from one big city to the next. I'm okay. not... I mean, I'm taking um, I'm taking some time to to recoup you know city life is hard man (laughs) i agree the traffic and like well austin is growing very very quickly the expense yeah it's expensive yeah there's Uh, a ton of people here there's so many people here there are there Mm -hmm. are um it's yeah that's very true but when you get Mm -hmm. out there have you considered that it might you might miss the I know it doesn't seem like it when you're in it, but like you might be like, oh, I'm kind of bored right now. Yeah, or be the devil's think- advocate. No, I really, I'm really, um, I'm really looking forward to the solitude and the the yeah. the quiet, peaceful, being surrounded in nature, seeing gonna, more green than I would concrete. You think you're relish you know? in this? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I I love. I'm not, I grew up in the city, but I'm not a city girl, if that makes any sense. I'm yeah. definitely like a mountain girl, you know? You just, you always, you kind of just flock I'm happy to there, Serenity, yeah. kind of mm-hmm. like a little, you know, like the peace, uh, the calmness, mm-hmm. I guess, when you get. Mm-hmm. So if you start a garden, which you should. I will start a garden. Or whatever, with the veggies. Uh-huh. Um, that's a full-time job. I mean, yeah, it can be, but there's ways that you can get around that. I mean, it's just like... Definitely. It's, but like... You just you, make it work for you. Easily. That's why mine doesn't work, because I don't come home in every day. Because you need to at least spend a little bit of time every day. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. even for me, that was asking too much. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm just saying, it, you... It's it, like your tea in the morning the or your coffee though. in the morning or whatever. You go out and you water your veggies and you talk to your plants. And well, then, that's what I'm getting you know. at is like, it seems yeah. like when I'm in Austin, I'm, I'm off to work, I'm getting home and, you mm-hmm. know, got to get the, the daughter and all, mm-hmm. you know, the city life. City life. And that's the thing about the city life. Some people can do it. Some people can live in a city and have that peaceful serenity and, you know, be in their garden and i see it i see people with huge gardens in their front yards you yeah. know everywhere here and it's one thing that i really loved about it austin when i first cool. moved here um because i was like oh people are doing that that means i can do it you know you know <laughs> but that didn't work <laughs> yeah so. well it's i mean it's easier to to, to say than to mm-hmm. do yeah but have you considered the the fact that you're going to be able to look up in the sky and just like because we stars. have a lot of light pollution here, even <laughs> yeah. though we're in Texas, and you can, you can go a ways out and still uh-huh. see a lot of stars. But I'm sure yeah. it'll be nice there. Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm really excited. That's cool. Yeah, and all the mountain trails and everything. And um, Paul, my my man. <laughs> yeah. He he rides dirt bikes and stuff, so he's that's uh, his, his jam. That's his jam. That's his fun fun time activity that he okay. likes to do. <laughs> Uh, so he's really stoked to get back up there and like show me some trails and stuff like that. So, so he's he's from there. So you'll basically have kind he's of he's from a, here. He's from San Antonio. But he did live there. But right? he's lived there. Yeah, he's, he's, lived he's there. been living there. Yeah. So you'll have kind of a 
a tour guide mm-hmm. to kind of get you settled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and one of my friends from New Mexico has been up there for a while, and like my cousin lives an hour and a half away. So yeah, yeah. Well, when you get out there uh-huh. and you start doing your thing, uh-huh. I don't know how long you should wait, but I I wonder what will happen if you listen to this podcast. <laughs> you know? I know, I know. Paul Paul said he wanted to listen. Oh, he <laughs> he should definitely listen. Yeah. But when you guys get out there, don't listen to anything. Don't listen to anything. Just listen to, to birds and nature. And Definitely. Just, just do your thing. Definitely. I'm super excited. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So you're, I, we're, we're I talking know, about I know, we've been jumping around all crazy. That's all good, though. <laughs> but you're at, at Italic. And how is that working? I mean, like. I, I love uh, Mary Catherine. Yeah. Chef Mary Catherine and her husband Drew, who like are the head chefs there, they're awesome. They're great people to work for. I love the, I love them. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's Italian though. It's like not my jam really. I mean, I, I yeah. like Italian. It's fine, but it's kind of boring. So what about the pastry side of that? What does that look like for you? That so I do like all their. Pastry prep for the entire restaurant. Saw a bunch of many things you were working on. Yeah, I do all their catering, all their private events. Um, I do a couple things for like the diner and uh, fairgrounds. The Twenty Four so. Diner. Mm-hmm. Okay. We do pop tarts. We like bake off their pop tarts over there. Yeah, so. Twenty Four Diner. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not giving away a lot of details, but I mean, they might need more of that shortly. Mm-hmm. Uh, now the Easy Tigers left. I think that, uh, you know, they might be kind of doing more in 24 diner yeah. than, than out of the commissary and whatnot. Nice, nice. Nice, but not nice. Because <laughs> I think they, they, you know, they have that commissary, the grindhouse. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forget about the grindhouse. The grindhouse, and they are just uh-huh. plowing through product there. Yeah. I mean, making the g- most ginormous size Lexans of, you know, their whatever the beet burger is, uh-huh, and, uh-huh. Uh, the hand-cut potatoes. The 24 diner is insanely good. It is. It's the best chicken and waffles I've ever had, for sure. Chicken and waffles. Mm-hmm. See, because they got that brown butter or that brown sugar butter or whatever oh, that they put on it. And it's so good. good. So that made me hungry, which leads me <laughs> to I have to ask you your favorite places, especially make it count because oh, you're not you're probably I'm not, not going to eat them before you leave. I know, and I've been thinking about like, okay, where do you want to eat before you leave, and like, what are you going to miss? Ramen Tatsuya. So good. Mm. And people, I mean, Kamari Tatsuya or whatever the other one that they have. We were talking about that last side. night. Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's, it's legit, like, you know? It's like a, a Tex. Is, to explain the food to me. I don't know how to explain their food. Okay. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's delicious. You should eat there. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's yeah. across from El Bruto, by the way. Oh, okay. There it is. You okay. Well. You could have worked there and I been know. eating lunch over there. I know, right? All the time. Happy life. <laughs> um, yeah, that place is good, but I definitely like, I love me some ramen from yeah. Ramen Tatsuya. Oh, it's very, very, yeah, very good. Yeah, it's so good. And like, Do you get there before the line and just, you know, like first to go? Or oh, you, no, I don't care. I'll wait in line. You wait? No oh, problem. Yeah. yeah. No problem. It's, wait in line. It's worth Get some sake while you wait. It's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> but yeah, I love Ramen Tatsuya. Um... What are some other places that I frequent? There was uh, the Tuk Tuk Thai, which they're renovating right now, so they're closed. Oh, it's renovating. Uh-huh. Uh, I was worried. I thought it was closed. It's not closed forever. You're talking about right here on Manchester? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's my favorite Thai place in town. Really? Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I love it. So whenever they reopen, you'll And you have order to... it to go or you go in there? Either or. The girls that work there are phenomenally fantastic to hang out with. <laughs> so what are they doing to it? Do you know? I think they're just giving it a facelift. You know, it's an old building, and I think it just needed, like, some TLC. Okay. It's like some serious TLC, you tuck, know? Tuck, Tuck. That's a very good suggestion. Yeah, Tuck, Tuck Thai is my favorite. I mean, Thai Fresh is my second favorite Okay, that's Thai over place. off near Elizabeth Street. What, what yeah, street it's like 5th and uh, Annie. One yeah. of the girls' names, yeah, over there. Okay, Fifth so and that Annie, sounds right, I think. Yeah. yeah. By the dog. There's like a dog walking place or something. Dog store. Thai the Fresh. Okay. Thai Fresh is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They have good chai there. Nice. I actually haven't been there. I've been there, but I haven't been there to eat. It's good. I like that place and I like what they do. They, uh, you don't, I mean, you can tip there, but they pay their servers a like good, decent living wage. So gratuity is already like included in your 
ticket, you know? That's always nice, um, especially when you're in the industry to it's know. It's just nice to know that they're not paying their servers $2 an hour, uh, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's just because that's archaic, and it needs to be changed. Very good. Well, well said. <laughs> it would be nice if they could. I mean, we see a lot of change happening, though. I mean, uh, yeah, there are chefs from a di- different generation who are running the show very differently. Definitely, now. definitely. The kitchen is changing a lot. I mean, even just in the five years that I've been doing, like going hard here in Austin, it's like I've seen a lot of growth. You know, yeah. and that's that's it's good. It's good. But. It's good. Is there anything that you see that you maybe? disapprove of or like maybe something happening in, in the industry as a whole in Austin specifically that you're like no that don't jive with or you just kind of I roll? mean I don't remember what chef was talking about it the, your uh counter cafe what was his name uh chef Phil chef Phil Philip Crossley Philip Crossley you were lovely Philip um he certainly is he was mentioning uh the I think it was him that was mentioning the <laughs> unreasonable price yeah. of food in this city and um i mean i get it farm to table yeah you're paying qual- like if you're paying quality money for quality food or whatever but yeah. um <laughs> yo chef pay your cooks more <laughs> yeah you know like well when you're paying those prices when you go out to eat yeah it would be nice if there was like a, a real transparent layout of how the Right. The the budget worked, mm-hmm. you know, where we have to charge this much extra. And then, yeah, but that's course, like never going to happen because it's business. And that's like giving away all your secrets of business, but, but you maybe know? Maybe not. Maybe because like transparency is like communication. Uh-huh. And like, what's better than just like some open communication? Right. Like, right. Michael Wake, I wish I would have aired this so you could have heard it. I don't know how far, uh, if you you have been listening a little bit, but I've listened to everyone except for the last one. Okay. And I, and I have one right here, literally, in the queue. <laughs> Ready to go. And he actually, he has the Funkadelic, but mm-hmm. he'll run, you know, other restaurants or companies' products, and he just like freely promotes them with no mm-hmm. shame, like slab barbecue. I love that. I love that. Yeah, I love and, that. But it's and like it's... A, a kind of communication with your customer, where mm-hmm. even if because you could kind of imagine if you were like, this is what we spend, right? You know, so this is what you spend, and right. you're you're paying three dollars extra, mm-hmm. you know, but. But this is it. You know, take yeah, it or leave but I mean, it, but most people see. don't really care. Most people that go out to eat, they yeah. don't. They, they don't know that. Um, they don't know how it all breaks down. I guess they is don't the know thing, how. It's and very... they don't really know. I think that the amount of uh, work that line cooks go through, not getting paid. Well, you know? back to your what you said. You know, your chef. You know, yeah. Let's get paid a little more. I really mm-hmm. that would be. It's it's a weird line because you have a lot of people who cook, right? And it's not a passion, right? They're exactly. Cooking because it can be a job, yeah. And if you you're not passionate about it, you're not you know eager to learn. It could be you know you could just get a job in a kitchen and, mm-hmm. and you know learn what you're supposed to do to get through the mm-hmm. the shift and yeah, you can get by or you can actually cook. <laughs> so right now. I mean, especially in Austin, we see a lot of a lot of growth with uh, people who are actually more passionate about cooking. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it would be it's kind of a weird line, though. Right? Yeah, and I think that it's getting better. I mean, when I first started out, I was barely making it ends meet. You know, it was it's like very, it's tough. Well, t- anything, I mean, yeah. I tell people maybe people don't know. I All mean, right. there's more people there. Five and- years ago, nine twenty five an hour, I was making plating Gosh. desserts. Uh, working maybe 45 hours a week and, like, a couple Re- hours a week off the clock, too, you know? Insurance, any of that stuff included? Hell no. Right. Hell no. That's tough. <laughs> we got a uh, family meal, you know? Um, and I've worked at kitchens who don't do family meal, and I think it is barbaric and... Um, I've, Wrong. <laughs> I mentioned this sometime. I've I've been uh, you know um, I guess honored or you mm-hmm. know grateful enough that I've given the opportunity to join in on some family meals. Yeah, and I don't even I'm not even technically they're fantastic. In the they're not so only good. not only do your cooks get to learn how to cook for a lot of people at once, you know, because most of the time line cooks are plating for one person, you know, yeah. or they're just focusing on one dish at a time. Whereas when you make family meal. You're cooking for 20 or 
20 people at yeah. least, you know? So um, you're kind of cooking in bulk, rather. <laughs> and what's so lovely, if it, it's like before the shift, typically, uh-huh. right? And yeah. Then you're and like then, feeding these guys, giving them energy. Yeah, yeah, you give each other energy. You sit down together. You talk about your day. You talk about your life. You talk about the, you know, what whatever's happening on the line, like whatever you need to talk about, you know. And it's just like this whole, I mean, it's really you feel like a family. It's a bonding experience, yeah. you know. And not only that, but... When I have a, a company that feeds me, <laughs> yeah, literally feeds me, that's a sign of that's like a sign of respect and love, oh, you yeah. know. Yeah. And it's like, okay, cool. Then that makes me want to give back even more, you know. It's like you you become family, you, you know. Be- you kind of become one, right? Yeah. I mean, you've cooked the food that's in your belly in mm-hmm. that kitchen. Now you're putting it out to other people. Yeah. It's almost like, I mean, working in a kitchen is kind of relentless and you'll, you'll burn through your, mm-hmm. you go through your energy. Mm-hmm. And while you're using that energy, if you know that you're, you know, you're running on fumes, but it's from <laughs> fumes that, you know, the food in the kitchen. Yeah, totally. And Uchi has it best. I think they go into detail. They have a schedule for their family meal. Okay. And, uh, it's, can you show up on your day off? I think probably. I mean, of course they would let you come in on your day off and work for free <laughs> under any circumstance. Uchi loves free work. Uh, um, and people love to work for Uchi for free. It's like it's it's a great place to learn. Did you have to? I was... I, I staged. You did stage. Yeah, that for was For how it. long? One day. That One was day. It. And yeah. then you were on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I turned down that job. I <laughs> went and worked at Vox for right. four months but or you did something end up and then went back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I emailed Andrew Lewis, who was the pastry chef at the time, and was like, hey, so I'm not crazy about my experience over here at Vox. You still got a position open over there at Uchi? And he was like, actually, I do. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, then I went and worked over there. So were you doing all those, like, crazy, like, peanut butter, jelly? Uh-huh, uh-huh, the oh, well, can you make that on your way out? Yeah, yeah, for oh, sure. I'll okay. just whip it up real fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that uh, Yeah, the peanut butter semi fredo. That was insane. And then we had a Japanese cheesecake that I was, like, dying over for a while, too. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I have. I think I have. Right. There you go. Oh, yeah. The, mm-hmm. Uchi. the Uchi cookbook. I never right next to the Art of Fermentation is perfect. That's one of my books that I need to get. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. You check it out, yeah. <laughs> no, don't give it to me now. I'm leaving you the state. You are leaving. <laughs> You'll never get it back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Um, Uchi's family meal. So, yeah, so they make a schedule and then um, you get put on, if it's something that you've never made before and maybe something a little bit more technical or complicated that you want to learn how to make, then they'll put you on with a, a chef or a sous chef. For family meal. Mm-hmm, for family cool. meal. Um, and because also because it's like, I mean, you only get exposed to like Japanese cuisine there, really, you know? Yeah. Um, you don't get to learn like any other kind of cuisine. So, um, there was this one Hawaiian thing that was like burger patties with like gravy and cheese over rice or potatoes or something that everybody loved. I don't remember that what it's called, good. but it was so good. But there's no bread or anything in there. No, just no. burger patties, gravy, yeah. cheese, cheese, and then sometimes we had it over rice, and I think one might, time we had it over good. potatoes. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah. Just like cream gravy, you know. Cream gravy, burger patties, just like beef, burger. Yeah, just like beef, burger patties. And like a yeah. good old piece of American cheese, right? Yeah, or whatever you no got kidding? laying around, you know. Yeah. Okay. That was a good one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I learned how to make tiki masala there nice. for a family meal one time because I was like, oh, I want to learn how to make this. And he was like, <laughs> cool, I'll put you on with this guy. He knows how to make it. So and that's unique, though. It's really of- unique, yeah. But they, I mean, Uchi's such a big well-developed company i think they 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 have it in their budget to um kind of yeah you know do that you know get special things for a family meal um sure odd duck it was whatever was laying around <laughs> which wasn't much because they used everything <laughs> so it was a lot of like egg white casseroles <laughs> that's funny <laughs> you <Yeah>. know <laughs> i was gonna say it's that's, like leftover that's corn so bad, bread or yeah. something yeah and like you know day old bread or whatever so um so Day old bread, I just it uh-huh. it triggered French toast. Um, mm-hmm. Are you? Do you have like this like incredible French toast recipe that you work with? So is that like pastry? Does so. it tie into I mean, like pancakes? Yeah, and French I think toast? so. I think so. Um, I like to make my French toast with 
a little bit of cream or half and half instead mm-hmm. of milk, you know, in yeah. the batter. Um, definitely cinnamon, like all the spices, clove, cardamom. Can, can I tell mm. you mine? Uh-huh, sure. And I just want to, I've, I think I've actually <laughs> said this before, but I love this recipe. Uh-huh. I, w- I won't say where I got it. I, okay. may, I may say one day. But, <laughs> so I, you, bu- you throw butter in a pan. Uh-huh. And you melt it with some brown sugar, Ooh, yeah. a little bit of maple syrup, uh-huh, and uh-huh. just a touch of vanilla, depending on the size yeah, of the, yeah. the batter you want. You let that kind of like bubble up for a second, uh-huh. and you turn off the heat, right? Uh-huh. So you've got like a caramel kind of thing going on there. Yeah. And then you pour it in with some, you know, some whipped eggs and uh, some heavy cream, uh-huh, uh-huh. and just mix all that together and a little bit of salt, uh-huh. and then holla or just fucking white bread. Yeah. And right, right on the grill with some butter. Yeah, so good. So good, right? My, I just ask my daughter. It's been like <laughs> breakfast all like, and it's dinner. Like, it's like you start making bananas fro- foster, but then you okay. go a different direction. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so that's, it's like a play off bananas. Just add some bananas, and then you got bananas foster French toast. Could do that, right? <laughs> yeah, I love that um, though. Yeah, and I don't even. I can't even make it any other way now that I do yeah. that. Yeah, do and you soak your bread? Do you like soak it for a long time? No, no. Yeah, I, I mean, soak mine pers- for a long time. Do you? Yeah, I like to get it like real soppy. How come? So I don't when know. you I just, when you could, I like the texture of the inside because the inside if you have like a thick a piece thick, of bread. Okay, it needs to be yeah, thick. Yeah, because if you're making French toast, you have to have thick thick bread. Okay, thick absolutely. Bread. <laughs> but not if you're using the white bread like I'm if you, if okay, you, I'm sorry. I don't eat white bread like that. Well, if that. you ever have a five-year-old, you might have a loaf <laughs> like of white Like Wonder bread. bread? Literally. Oh, God. I support it. That's not food. I support it. <laughs> I'm all about it. Hell, I'll, how else would you make a grilled cheese? Wait, that's a bad question for a that's pastry chef. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's so many other breads you can use. <laughs> okay, that's true. That's true, but, but yeah, thick piece of bread. You soak it, what, and why do you like the inside? Because even I, it's with like a thick souffle freeze, on yeah. the inside, it becomes like souffle, souffle texture. You yeah. know, kind of on the inside, like the the, the doughy part of your bread. You and know? do you add some crunch if you're gonna do French toast, or you just eat it like it is when you you know you've soaked I, it? It depends on my mood. Like, I mean, definitely. Like, I get my pan ripping hot and. Fry it crispy, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very stubborn in my ways with this one recipe. Yeah. <laughs> but I could use some actual bread. Hala is the bread of choice for that. Hala, yes, love hala bread. You like making it too, mm-hmm. I'm sure. Yeah, and that's like a different, so that's different than sourdough because yeah. it has milk and eggs and butter and stuff. I, d- I think I just butter, buy no it. butter, no butter. Just no milk, butter? Milk and eggs. But though. definitely eggs. Mm-hmm. And sourdough has... Flour, water, salt, yeast. That's it. That's it. How do we? How does it become sourdough? What? What the, is your your uh, your starter? Your Levon, your your mother, your baby. You okay. Know? Have you ever made like the mother at home? Oh like, yeah, for sure, a couple times. Um, do you they have don't like a jar live. that's in the in the suitcase right now? I don't have one right <laughs> now. All mine have died. I moved around too much in the past year. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so you said you've um, not s- stuck in a place for a year, huh? Yeah, I've been moving around a lot. Um, but that's, I mean, you know, I'm nomadic, so. You're nomadic, <laughs> but you're not going to be once you go. I, I would. Oh, I will continue to be nomadic, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 I got the travel bug in me for life. Is there anywhere you want to go? <sighs> Everywhere. Is there anyone I don't want to go? I don't want to really go. I don't really have a desire to go to Russia. <sighs> Um, wow, I, I was I was thinking in the yeah. U.S., but yeah, Russia. Yeah. I, I'm not going there anytime soon. <laughs> no, I'm thinking the world. <laughs> okay, where else in the world? Um, you want to go to Australia? Yeah, I definitely want to go to Australia, New Zealand, um, Thailand, Chef Vietnam. Chef Joseph, right? Yeah, my little brother's living in Osaka right now, teaching English as a second language. Wow. And looking at graduate schools in Ireland. So cool. Hopefully, he'll stay over there, and I'll. Have some place for you to stay. Yeah, he loves Ireland. Yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely want to go to Ireland. I've been to France. My stepmom is from France. Uh, so I went there when and I was like 15. 15. Okay, mm-hmm. so you weren't quite into the cooking and the industry I didn't yet. know. I didn't know yet. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I always like loved it, but I didn't know what that meant. You that's know? the heart of it all. Yeah, for yeah. sure. We see it everywhere. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, hell, even in Thai kitchens here, right? I mean, yeah. 
just the French influence. Yeah, yeah, French food. It's like kind of where it all began, and and Italy too. I think Italy had a lot to do with it, and Spain has a lot of influence in it too. So I definitely want to go there. My mom's going to the French Alps for some retreat or something. I don't know. Have you uh, traveled at all yet? Yeah, for sure. I've been to... Outside the U.S.? Yeah, France. I mean, not since I, I mean, was a kid. I mean, besides France, yes, yeah. Yeah, I went to Jamaica when I was younger. What did you uh, think about that? Loved Jamaica. Got a job offer in Jamaica um, doing zip lining tours. It was hilarious. They were that like, you're like natural. My dream. You should totally come work here. And I was like, I'm 17 and I have I need to do my senior year of high school. I See, I would have had a different <laughs> response. I, I had like a, a literally a dream... Of being on an island mm-hmm. and like giving like a, it was not a zip line. It was like the, you know, the ski boats. And Those are fun too. Pay me minimum wage. Let me live near the beach. Right. Exactly. Or yeah. Fun. Exactly. I would yeah, have had a hard time saying Jamaica. no. Yeah. Jamaica was awesome. The culture there is really awesome. The people are amazing. The food is awesome. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, kind of Caribbean-esque, but not, you know. Yeah. Well, um, there's there's definitely something about that salt water and that nice blue ocean and yeah. the air and the sunshine. And yeah. I'm very attracted to that. That's why I've settled for Austin. Mm-hmm. But I would have been fine in Florida or California. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, yeah. So, yeah, Jamaica. Where else did I go? Uh, Honduras, Belize, Mexico a bunch of times. We used to go to Mexico for Christmas. Um, Did you ever run in into somebody that you know from somewhere else in another place? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Well, no, but I met I met one of my best friends in the entire world, Sasha. I met her here, but we were both living in Albuquerque for like years. But you ran into each other here. I did. I never met her in Albuquerque. I met her here, and we became friends here. Oh, and you're both from the same place. Yeah. yeah. We were both like living in the same place, knew a lot of the same people, never met there. Yeah. But we yeah. met here. That was interesting. That, I thought that, that was is. ironic. Yeah. And what'd she think about you leaving? Uh, she's happy. She's in New Mexico. She left like, okay. yeah, last fall or something. She couldn't handle it? Didn't like it? She just came here for a little while. Um, she's an artist and she's also very nomadic, so I'm sure she's going to fly someplace <laughs> else <laughs> soon too. You, you know? think you're going to have the... The baking and, you know, pastry uh, follow you wherever you go? Oh, yeah, for sure. I'll always bake. I can't stop. I stopped for, like, let's see, back in August I took a break um, when I left Vespayo, which I was I was their pastry and, chef for a little while. And you heard Phil like, talking about Vespayo. Yeah, yeah, so she, uh, Chef Ryan... Yeah. Um, Samson bought it. He's the chef owner now. Oh, it's thank his... you for confirming yeah. this because I've been saying that uh-huh. because I had heard that, but mm-hmm. I don't know any details. So he bought it. Yeah. He, he, or, you know, bought them out or whatever. I mean, I don't know the business details, but right. he is the chef owner now. It's okay. his, I it's his that, baby yeah. now. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, their pastry chef, Brittany is amazing. She's a wonderful, wonderful. She, she was my sous chef. Her? Okay. Yeah. She was my sous chef and she's been with them for three years now or something. And, um, does things that I don't have the patience to do. Like all of her little, she's got these little like peach, cookies like filled ricotta cookies on the menu right now and they're shaped like a peach <laughs> at Inoteca. so she's awesome you should go eat her little treats I'm sure if you ever want a little bite of something delicious Brittany, um she's she's rad so yeah yeah ryan is a uh, ryan's the guy now for this bio in Oteca. do you keep up with anybody over there not really i mean i saw them today i dropped in because you're leaving. Because um, I'm leaving, yeah. And, like, Brittany and I still exchange recipes every once in a while and stuff. So, oh, that's cool. So that's good, yeah. And then the chef that I worked for, Allison, she's in North Carolina now. Um, but she was the pastry chef when I started there. And then I took her job when she left. And uh, she, I still talk to her on Instagram every once in a while and stuff like that. So. It's nice to be yeah. able to be connected like that. Mm-hmm. Social Even media is where it's at <laughs> Right. So for you, that, you know, for that particular reason. Your social media is not private, right? Mine is not right so now, no. you're at it's not. 
Dillio. Dilly Doll. Dilly yeah. Doll. On, Dilly uh, Doll. D Y L I. Yeah, Dilly Doll. Instagram. Mm-hmm. You're on Facebook. I'm on Facebook. Yep. So you're not going to get off social media when you go. No, I'll continue to be on social media. I have so many friends all over the country and family all over the country. That's how I can yeah. like keep contacted with like close contact with them because a phone call isn't always enough. Sometimes, sometimes you need a video chat or like. Exchange funny yeah, memes or something, you know. S- small spot where I was, uh, I took about six months off social media, mm-hmm. and I thought I was happy, but you know, we're really connected with people, and it's it's super it's a lot convenient. To... And that's the thing is, like, if you don't, I mean, I'm not on I'm not on social media all the time, you know. No, um, yeah. I've been checking my Facebook like a psychopath lately because I'm my house is up for. Like rent, you know. So I, I turned somebody to... on to that. I, I guess it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Right. Lots of people have been interested. It is a great little spot and super good deal. But someone will someone will pop it up. Uh, there's a girl who came today who I think. It looked very nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's very nice. It's a very nice place. So I've been checking that like a psycho um, the it's past like week. But when yeah. I don't have anything really going on, I don't. I mean, I'm on it like on a cigarette break or something like that, you know, or like when I'm falling asleep at night or something, you know. With this podcast, Mm -hmm. I I got the podcast up and going, I made the Instagram, the Facebook, and Mm -hmm. I basically, um, it's the only reason I've been checking. But for other other purposes, you know, like now, you know, I've been, I'm just trying to make this grow. Yeah. So I've been checking it for for those reasons. And that's reasons. the thing; it's good for networking. But it's good that's for networking. Mm-hmm. Um, I had, you know, my, you know, yeah, I had this weird stint where I thought it wasn't a good thing, and then I kind of realized that it actually is. Well, it's a tool, and that's the thing about it is like it's not this. I I think that <laughs> a lot of people are totally addicted, you know, well, that, and that's, consumed yeah. in it, um, yeah. and it creates unhappiness or disease in their life, you know, dis-ease yeah. yes. in their life. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, it can be a really useful tool if you use it in the right way. So a hundred percent. Yeah. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it will be very useful mm-hmm. if you you guys get off the beaten path and yeah, settle totally. down somewhere and you're, um, kind of secluded mm-hmm. a little bit in a smaller town. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Mm-hmm. You'll be able to stay connected. Yeah, I'm super stoked. I'm uh, I'm really excited to kind of get out of the city and get back to the simpler life. But yeah, definitely I'll be continuing on social media. My mom wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Send me pictures of where you live and your house and what right. you ate for breakfast and everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely, though. Well, when you get out there, uh-huh. I hope you find something that's like awesome for work like yeah. that makes you you know that kind of like jogs you back to where you were thrown in the diner and you're like yeah, this is it yeah i think that um the cheese so what bread was for me you know before um and i mean i don't i'm by no means an expert in bread i just have this really awesome curiosity for it and, and, it, I, enjoy and, it, right? and I enjoy it and it started to make sense to me so I'm like okay now I'm understanding the science behind your arm it to bring bread I should have brought you some bread I yeah have <laughs> <your arm>. I <laughs> it's funny I made you a little tiramisu last week when we were supposed when was, I thought we were supposed to do meet, you know how long that thinking. took yeah. oh you made a tiramisu I what made a know? little tiramisu but then I forgot it at the restaurant anyway so okay. I couldn't have even well, gotten you, to it before I saw you at the restaurant you gave me uh some kind of brownie oh it was like the chocolate olive oil cupcake and it took about 30 seconds mm-hmm. I, I don't think you saw that happen but it was like, <laughs> no oh, in yeah my, in my belly. Very <laughs> that's quickly. good that's good that chocolate oil yeah oil sorry about that last good. week yeah no no it's, it's totally fine totally fine yeah well i'm scheduling people and it's not my uh it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot, it's a lot. I, I get mm-hmm. uh people for next week um you Keep listening to. Oh, well, I'm going to. Yeah, definitely. And I'm gonna be I driving keep, for five days too, so you better well, keep pumping them out. Well, we <laughs> we do. We have one in the queue here, Michael uh-huh, Wake. Uh-huh. We're gonna have yours. Nice. I keep telling people that you guys are welcome to come back. You are welcome to come back. Totally. In yeah. fact, if you come back to town and uh-huh. it's not like this, like short-lived, you know, three-day mm-hmm. stint where you got to see people. Mm-hmm. Um, you can, you need to come back and tell us how life is. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, because I I'll tell you about if I'm if I've met any goats to learn how to make cheese. Goat cheese. Yeah, goat cheese, man. I fucking love goat cheese. It, so it sounds like you need to grow beets. Because beets d- and goat cheese are. 
Oh, yeah, they do go really good together. Yes, they, they really do. did it. And beets, I mean, beets are delicious. Yeah, and I do not have a green thumb at all. All. So you know that? Yeah. Cause, How do you know? Well, I have uh, <laughs> my evil ex-boyfriend in New Mexico. Yeah. Um, I was with him for like four years, and the whole time we lived together, he always had a garden. So, so he's I learned in the, about it. In the gardens. He's no, like, no, no, different ex-boyfriend. Different. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jack's not my evil ex-boyfriend. Jack was the one I had here. So the evil ex boyfriend. Yeah, that was a long time ago. But yeah, he was a he was a landscaper, so he always had gardens in his house. And then when we lived together, he had gardens. So I learned how to grow a little bit. I guess I had the well, garden with like, him. Well, maybe because he's the evil ex boyfriend, <laughs> he planted a seed that makes you think that he you did. don't have a green thumb. I think that's why I stayed with him for so long too, was because I got fresh veggies all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me give you a tip. If you <laughs> go start growing veggies uh-huh. and someone tells you you have the green thumb. I'll believe them. No, 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 don't. Don't believe them? Because I, I did that. Oh, and, and then the, you got then lazy it about into, it. No, it grew into chaos. I was like, <laughs> I have the green thumb and we're good. And it just it blew you up. You got lazy about it. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, yes. Or egotistical or something. I don't know. I think the laziest. Yeah, you're lazy. Right. Yeah, lazy. Software. Well, it grew into each other, and I just I was right. at work and back yeah, and yeah, forth, yeah, and yeah, I didn't yeah. realize how much work goes into it. We mm-hmm. got a lot out of that garden. We got tomatoes. It was mm-hmm. the basil was amazing to have on hand. Did you know what kind of basil you had? I mean, I don't. I don't know like okay. the strain of basil, but okay. it was it was just. Beautiful leaves of basil, like you'd buy it, uh, you know, the you know, like if you go buy basil, uh-huh, uh-huh. if you buy like a little package of basil, yeah, yeah. I she always thought basil. my daughter is scarlet, uh huh. I call her scarlet begonias, uh, yeah. I've seen her on your Instagram, yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> she's adorable. Well, we were talking about, and it, it, it I swear it could have worked at the time because we had so many herbs, mm-hmm. the garden kind of the herbs grew like weed, yeah, uh, weeds. If mm-hmm. you could, um, if we could package it up with like a little sticker that said Scarlet Begonias. Yeah. And, and I thought that was the coolest thing. Yeah. I, I was like, college fun. Here we come. <laughs> it was like a, a pipe dream because it didn't, it didn't go anywhere, but I, I thought it was great. And, um, I still like the idea. There's still time. You can just still do it. Well, we, right? I, so if There's chefs are coming grow, over right? here frequently yeah. and we can grow some herbs yeah. successfully like yeah. we did, cause they were like crazy. I had so much. Beautiful oregano, the basil. Yeah, you just have to fit it into your routine. Yeah. No, you it's, know? you've got to come home. Uh-huh. And, you know, for me, when I come home, I'm usually getting cleaned up. So if it's right. like before I get cleaned up, yeah. go in the garden. Yeah. Spend yeah. 10 minutes in the garden. Yeah. Yeah. That's all you got to so, do. <laughs> scarlet begonia herbs. If you come back, you come back on the podcast, maybe you'll get some of that. Yay. If I can get that. I mean, we've got the gardens, but we Definitely. need Definitely. We need we we need soil in the other garden. So uh-huh. don't skip that on the soil. Natural gardeners, I think, is a good place. It's the soil right? is yeah 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 natural gardeners yeah yeah. But the soil, I don't. They probably have that at natural gardener, but the soil they have at like Home Depot even. But you need to buy organic, mm-hmm. you know, like gardening soil. Yeah. And it can be very expensive to fill it up a huge be. garden. Mm-hmm. So that's why I cheaped out on the other one. Well, you just like, but then you'd have to start composting and then you don't have to spring for like the super, super expensive stuff because then you can like compensate with your compost. Yeah, I was doing juices for the longest time. Uh I'm I'm irresponsible as like a, you know, an environmental person. My mom composts. I don't compost, but I don't really cook at my house. But I do. I mean, like I'm a coffee fanatic. There's Mm -hmm. always coffee grounds. Yeah. Ground coffee and like the juice. I mean, like I, I do a lot of fresh yeah. It's nothing extravagant, believe me. But, right. But there, oh, there's all. If you make a juice, or like there's all kinds of pulp left right. over. And what do we do? We do that slow juice where it like presses it out. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's 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 old. I mean, it's like yeah. five years old, but it still works. So we get these little like, you know, you know it presses it out. Mm-hmm. And get, yeah. So that's perfect for right. compost. Right. So it's sort of a shame that I'm admitting <laughs> to. But so you're just being lazy, is what it is. Well, I never bought the compost <laughs> thing I want was like a hundred dollars, some hundred plus, and uh-huh. I just it's at Home Depot, I think, and I never, yeah, 
Never followed through. I thought it was going to show up at my door one day just for thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. Wishful thinking. But I throw that stuff in the garden, mm-hmm. but I don't compost it. Right. And there's like a whole, that's the, I don't understand composting. Well, um, you turn it. But there's like a whole thing. Yeah. There's a becomes, whole system yeah, that you do to make compost do the things that you want it to do. Yeah. It, yeah. There's a difference between throwing, you know, coffee grains in a garden and then composting coffee grains. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. But I don't know what the difference is. <laughs> I don't know. It breaks down a certain way and turns into goodness. Yeah. (laughs) For the earth. Yeah. Well, follow through with that when you move. Yeah, for sure. I will. Hopefully I will have a garden. Um, I would love, 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 love a garden and some land, you know. Um, But, yeah, I don't know where we're going to land. We don't have a place yet or anything. Yeah. So So when you guys go, Mm -hmm. how does that work? Well, we're going to get a trailer. And then we're going to pack it full of the stuff that fits in there. Kind and then we're going to drive just like a trailer, like a closed in. Like a U-Haul. No, like a, like a, yeah, I guess like a U-Haul pull behind your truck kind of trailer. Because yeah. Paul has a truck. Um, so, yeah, we're going to pack it full. And he's got his dirt bike. And I've got my bed. And that's pretty much it. And a bunch of boxes of clothes. But when you go. We're going to go. We're just going to go. And you're going to go to that town. Uh-huh. I think I start looking for a place to live. Uh, maybe, yeah. I mean, I mean, we have lots of friends there, so okay. we might just like. I was camp getting worried out. for a second. <laughs> All right, but you guys, it's I mean, we're work. hippies, man. We're gonna it's go gonna... with the flow. We're gonna do whatever we want, you know. Yeah. Let life take us on our own journey. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. And you're gonna come back here one day if you do. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll be back for Christmas. I mean, his dad lives here in San Antonio. My mom lives here in Austin. Um, I don't think my mom's gonna go anywhere anytime soon. Although, who knows? Because she's a little nomad like me too. So yeah, yeah. Um, well, if this yeah. podcast is still going strong, mm-hmm. that would be a very interesting podcast. Yeah. It would yeah. be like full circle. What you been up to, man? Yeah, because yeah. I was about to say I welcome everyone back, but you, you're you leaving. But Yeah. Come back. I will. I'll yeah. be back to Austin for sure. I love Austin. Austin's a really dope city, and it's been amazing to me. I can imagine if you move and uh-huh. you come back, uh-huh. Austin will feel completely different. It's going to feel... Every city feels completely different when you leave and come back for an extended period of time. Yeah, that's I mean, be it just true. like It's just like people, you know? Everybody grows. Yeah. What does they say? The um, the only thing that never changes is that everything does change. It's a good saying. Or something like that. It's, yeah. If I that's it. I think it's it, a variation yeah. of that, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> well, I see. I just see so much happening here so quickly that I'm like, as soon as that's done, yeah. things will be different. And then I drive well, down the street, and then something else like, happens. Yeah. Well, even down, it's just a lot happening at once, and I'm it's like, it's so huh. much. Yeah, it's really growing really fast, and um, there's good things and bad things to that. You know, yeah, there's definitely good things. I mean, Austin is a dope city. There's yeah. there's really awesome things to do here, and um, experience, yeah. you know, the, the music, the food, the green belt, like it's all, you have pretty much everything. I love that we can go like everywhere we want to yeah. in a day. And it's yeah. not, it's not like Houston where it's a complete monstrosity. Right. And, yeah. Right. Like I can go see like some very important people on mm-hmm. all different parts of town mm-hmm. and, like, feel very satisfied when I got home. Yeah, and, like, you might deal with a little traffic, but, like, okay. But you can do it. You can do it. I don't think that's achievable most places. Right, right. So we have, I, I say we have, like, a small town, like, kind of feel. Mm-hmm. But it's, mm-hmm. like, it's it's still, like, a bigger city. It is a big city. I think there's over, definitely over a million people here. Yeah, I'm not sure the population, actually, mm-hmm. but... But I grew up in an even bigger city, so that's like my whole bias is skewed. We were neighbors. Did I you? know. Yeah, Chicago. Yeah, Chicago, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, my cousin lives in Chicago. Yeah, I'm I used no to go up to Chicago. To that weather. I drove from Chicago to St. or from St. Louis to it's like Chicago. Like a six-hour drive, right? <laughs> Not for me. I did it in like four and a half. One oh time. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but I had a little Honda Civic at the time, so it was a zippy little car. But a little V four. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. Yeah. Two thousand. 
fall four, yeah. 2005 Honda Civic. It's ripping two up door. I thirty. What? No, it's not I thirty five. It's like it was a uh, um, the roads. I eighty. It was either seventy or forty. No, go. seventy. I don't remember which one went up though. Yeah. Seventy went over. I've made that trip once over. or twice. Yeah. I remember it taking a lot longer, but I was not driving. Yeah, I drove pretty fast back in the day. I uh, mean, yeah. I had a buddy who grew up in St. Louis, and he's no longer with us, but mm-hmm. he was the coolest guy. His dad owns. It's interesting. <laughs> His dad owns uh, tr- the all the walk-ins. You know the True. Have you ever seen the logo? No, Just look. I the don't ne- know what you're talking about. The next time you walk into any, uh-huh. even grocery store or even a kitchen, a commercial kitchen, yeah, the all the coolers. Just look at the bottom right, and I believe it's T R U E. Okay. Or yeah. No, T R U. T R U. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. Uh, this was. I knew Daniel Trulask, and his father's company no was shit. Trulask. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. He's he's no longer with us. But who I met the Firestone family one time. It's I don't cr- remember what the nuts. circumstance like, was, but like, like the tire fire Firestone yeah. tire family. It's yeah, crazy, right? Like they don't even feel famous. I'm sure, right? Right. They're just floating. They were just like normal people. But they're every, you know, it's like you're on my 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 vehicle right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And you're in my kitchen and you're in the, but like those true, those, if you just walk into like the, like a cheap uh, mm-hmm. convenience store and you open a cooler and you look down, true. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. St. Louis is a great town. Um, the food there, I don't know about the food there. I so, mean, it's so. St. Louis. Yeah. You got the, uh, the barbecue here. So, you know, Texas barbecue, right? Yeah. St. Louis barbecue, Kansas City style barbecue. Uh, a little bit different. Um, I grew up with like saucy ribs, you know. Yeah. And I come down here and we get brisket, and it's like all dry, dry rub, you know. Yeah. Did you ever? It was different. Was there a famous Dave's? A famous Dave's? No. Okay. No. I don't think so. I thought in the Midwest maybe. I but, don't know. Yeah, but very saucy. Like you yeah. get some ribs and they're like saturated in like a barbecue yeah, sauce. Yeah, you get sauce all over your face when you eat them. Yeah. You know? It's delicious though. It's so good. It is so good. But they don't do brisket really up there like they do down here. Not at all, right? Mm-mm. Like I don't even it's think It's all I, about the ribs. It's all about the ribs. All about the ribs. So yeah, that was a thing. I like, I love St. Louis style ribs. Yeah. I do yeah. love saucy ribs. <laughs> is that what you'd go when you get, or eat when you went back there? Oh, no. I ate all the crappy food when I went back there. Emo's Pizza. <laughs> pizza. That's uh, it. Yeah. Emo's Pizza. It's like thin crust, um, like cracker style, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. I know. Um, So good. I don't know what kind of cheese they use, but it was not anything that I've ever tasted before. It was like, it was a blend. I think they did like mozzarella and something else, but it was so, yeah. it almost tasted fake, but like in a good way, you know? <laughs> yeah, like that's, cheese whiz. That's like a, yeah, it's like American cheese, right? Yeah. It's not cheese. But it was white. It was like a white cheddar kind of thing, and I think mixed with mozzarella or something like that, you know? Um, is, the, is it popular, the white cheese pizza there, the St. Louis? Or no? I mean, not white pizza, but white cheese on pizza, yeah. No, but not like the... Not like white stuff. Like, okay. definitely marinara sauce. Okay. Definitely marinara sauce. All right. Um, but Emo's Pizza, I guess, would be, like, considered St. Louis-style pizza, I guess, because it's, like, the most popular pizza in St. Louis, and it's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, Toasted Ravioli. You can't get that, like, anywhere but St. Louis. Toasted Ravioli. Do you even uh, know what that is? I mean, like a <laughs> hard, crispy ravioli. No, covered. <laughs> it's not. It's, like, a breaded... Uh, oh, it's like fried. It's it, it tastes fried, but I think they're baked. Okay. You know, and uh, I have not figured out how to make it. Because when you said that, I was like, "Who wants a ravioli <laughs> with like crispy sides?" It's, it's like <laughs> so good. Okay. It's so good, but, but it's breaded, like a breading. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like a but like a light breading, like um like just breadcrumbs. You know. Yeah. It's like they take a ravioli, dip it in egg wash, and then roll it in breadcrumbs, and then bake it or something like that. Sounds good. It's delicious. Oh, yeah. Sounds yeah. good. <laughs> well. And then Ted Drew's ice cream. That's the other one. Ice cream. Ted Drew's ice cream, yeah. Ted Drew. Ted. Ted Dr- Drew's. Yeah. Two names? Yeah. First well, and last first, name? First and last name. First okay. and last name. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do they have Oberweiss? They do have Oberweiss. 
That was cool. Have you had their chocolate milk? It's so good. Oh my god, it, <laughs> it's so and they, good. Overwise, like delivers to your door. <laughs> yeah, like they old were, school style. They were ahead of the curve. The, okay, so it In is old glass. school, but they were ahead of the curve with like all this like deliver to your door. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's weird because it's not ahead of the curve at all because no, it is old school. But it is old like school. Like a milkman. Right. So creamy. So creamy and delicious. Best chocolate milk in the fucking world, dude. Yeah. yeah totally. A nice cup of overwise chocolate milk right now would mm, be delicious. With some cookies. Oh, yeah. What kind of cookies? Chocolate chip, dude. What, like homemade chocolate yeah, chip? Yeah, like the big fluffy kind. Oh. The big chewy gooey fluffy kind with big ass chocolate chips in them. I went around. This is random, <laughs> but it's related to cookies uh-huh. um, during the holidays because mm-hmm. my daughter was uh, into baking, mm-hmm. um, and I was like asking every pastry chef I know, "Give me your best chocolate chip recipe." Dude. And you can look on our fridge. Actually, they're still on there. <laughs> Nestle, Nestle's recipe on the back of the Nestle Toll House chocolate chip you cookie like bag. That one? There you I go. love that one. There we go. I like fluctuate a little bit, but. <laughs> I love that cookie recipe. So we, I, I got fixated on the way the Sarah Lee one went. Okay. But it, they were like these huge yeah. cookies. But like I was like, let's do this, but make them smaller. Right. And so there was a lot of experimenting. I, Did it I, work? I, was it successful? Well, we made like so many chocolate chip cookies. Mm-hmm. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and it was not good for me because I was like chocolate chip cookies, chocolate chip cookies. Like... All the time, you know, yeah. I was, and I was like, yeah, this is great. You know? When I was making all those mini cheesecakes for the diner, I had 260 one time. Then I made in just like two hours. I was like, oh what am I going to do with all these mini cheesecakes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cheesecake is very good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, but cookies. You, I'm interested. You should look at those before you... Before you yeah, had, for sure. I'll check out your cookies. You, you <laughs> should, I mean, we don't have any cookies made. You can look at the recipes oh, okay. yeah, that yeah, I yeah, was yeah. given. I think there's a couple still up there. But, for uh, sure. Yeah, we 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 tried the cookies thing, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, cookies, cookies and milk, Oberweiss milk. Mm, yeah, it's it's some, almost cream. And it's almost cream. Yeah, and like you wouldn't think drinking cream is good, but like you it's drink so that. Good. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> and the best part is when it's like at the doorstep. Yeah, they bring it to your door. Like There's a come milk on. man. A milkman. A milkman. A legit milkman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting job, right? <laughs> and then n- d- don't go into the jokes about the oh, you're the milkman's son. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> sure. <laughs> well, we've only known each other for a short time. We have, but I think that well, you'll be missed. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but here, this is thanks. at least. <laughs> I, I calling it like a souvenir, right? You yeah, could, and I mean, like I'm, I, I'm. I am so good at staying friends with people from far away and like keeping in contact with people from far away. I, I have touch. so many friends over the country, like yeah. all over. So, yeah, social media, it's great. Social media, that's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. You can like FaceTime someone who doesn't have FaceTime. It's bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> I've FaceTimed, um, you know, like people that were definitely not expecting it. Right. But it's been like, Oh, what's up, man? Yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, no, no, nice surprise to see your face all right, randomly. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it makes you wonder what's next. But yeah. Have you watched those videos on AI? I've seen the all alien, kinds of the, stuff. Like robots or, or whatever. Have Fucking you seen like crazy. Boston Dynamics and all that stuff? No. Oh, God. Boston Dynamics? Oh, God. Then you haven't seen anything. Is it the, the one chick? What's her name? And it's, then there was I saw these I saw this one. It was like two robots like conversating with each other, and they were like talking about oh, the yeah. end of the world and the annihilation of the planet. I think I did see I something like, like oh that. My God. No, Boston Dynamics makes these like robots that um, run like parkour cro- courses and like get out of here. Like, have you ever seen that dog dancing? And it's uh-huh, it's uh-huh. a robot though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's not a three D. Right. That's a real robot. <laughs> That's a real that's Boston Dynamics. It's just, creepy how uh, yeah. real they're getting. Uh, it's creepy. It's it's. They're gonna be, take over. You think so? Yeah. So Terminator. But too. if you really want to go in, I mean, I don't know if you're a big on conspiracy, but I love conspiracy theories. Uh, I mean, <laughs> what what's the conspiracy? The the robots are gonna take over the planet. I mean, if we give robots the you know, ability to kind of reproduce themselves uh-huh. and they can 
upgrade themselves. Well, I mean, they're mechanics. So if we like upload software and then they learn how to learn. Right. And they learn how to kind of upgrade themselves. Yeah. It's, that's basically what happened in Terminator right. where <laughs> suddenly, uh, you know, in the blink of an eye, somebody came back from the future and they were like, you know, we've been upgrading. But um, <laughs> I mean. Robots taking over. Uh huh. So do you know that China has a completely different outlook on robots? That when they, nobody I'm is, sure. but I'm nobody's sure thinking do. in this like paranoid state of no, robots. The They're like not. thinking, yay, you know, robot, yeah. as soon as robots come, you know, like, no, I don't need to fold my clothes. Mm-hmm. You know, like they don't mm-hmm. see any negative aspect. Right. Um, I like the, you know, the walking dead doomsday approach that yeah. we all have. <laughs> yeah. That the, the, when the AI comes, like we're going to need to duck because like they've figured out how They're going to gonna turn us all into slaves. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and if we don't comply, they're going to kill us. And then if you like, what is, what do we do when we see an ant? We step on it. That's yeah. what a robot's going to do when they see us. Yeah. I mean, I get it all. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I, I dismiss it. Um, it's not here. Did you did you hear uh, the podcast? Do you listen to podcasts beyond this? I do, but so, not a whole lot. I'm like just now. Well, I'll I've, turn you on to one. Yeah, yeah. And anyone who who's curious when mm-hmm. we're talking about robots taking <laughs> and over aliens. the and, <laughs> aliens. Oh wait, aliens is a whole other thing. Aliens, That's just in my mind. I haven't said that out loud. Aliens is another aliens thing. is a whole other thing. Yeah. yeah. What about different oh, realms? So, real yeah, quick, the totally. podcast uh-huh, I'm referencing, uh-huh, yeah, totally. Elon, Elon Musk, you know, creative oh, Tesla, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. and Joe Rogan. Okay, okay. I, I think he got in a lot of hot water because he like was, you know, smoking. Uh-huh, whatever. He, well, he got, you know. His stock plummeted, and <laughs> you know, you know, but it's all good. Mm-hmm. But he was talking about exactly what you're saying. He was, Robots taking over the world. That's what Elon Musk, you know, the the super genius of today, the Einstein, as we know, <laughs> believes. <Is he? laughs> well, yeah, I think he's pretty smart. Do you even like Teslas? Have you driven a Tesla? I have not driven a Tesla, but I have. What do you think? Well, I valeted for a little while whenever I like took my break from the kitchen back in August. Uh, how, but how, okay, so it was was it a new <clears throat> Tesla? It was a new Tesla. I've driven a couple different kinds. I mean, because just parking them or whatever. But um, hold on, hold on. Where yeah. is this going? <laughs> Are they great? They're not that great. I mean, they're just like a robotic car, you know. And I'm all about Mar- American muscle. Like, give me a stick shift that, like, vroom, vroom, you know, like, give yeah. me something with. I, I, I got can the truck feel underneath me. I love that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. I would. I'm completely happy with my vehicle. Yeah. yeah, I'm old school when it comes to that. I don't want a car that doesn't, I don't have to do anything for, you know? I want to drive I think my is, car. Though, <laughs> I mean, like, they've let him drill underneath California to create tunnels to, like, you know, like, bypass traffic. I think he, we, we got to give <laughs> I him I don't know a, anything about that. It's true. He's, <laughs> he's like, launched things into outer space. He is rich a genius. Rich people do crazy things. I don't think it's, like, rich. I think he's actually a genius. If you look okay. into it, you'll, you'll, you'll see. Okay, he's, I'll have to He's look actually, into it. like, a, like, a nerdy super genius guy. Okay. But he that's the podcast, mm-hmm. but you said AI and aliens. Yeah, and aliens, yeah. Aliens is another con- conspiracy thing. Did they come down and abduct you, or have you seen them in the sky? Neither. I just know that they're out there. Yeah, I mean, because it would only make sense. I, yeah, probably. Like, uh, so we're not talking about UFOs. Logistically speaking, aliens do exist. Yeah. Logistically speaking, we are aliens to other Creatures out there in the I would multi-universe, argue, you know. I would argue that if you put it out there, just <laughs> like, you know, to be, you know, as elementary as possible mm-hmm. to someone who's like aliens aren't real. That if you just said, "Look, we're in a galaxy that's among many galaxies, yeah. and it just goes and goes and goes." There's something else, even if it's right. like a bacteria. There's yeah. another life form. Yeah, and. You know, most people will go, I agree. Right. Whether they have a consciousness or not is like another debate. But I right. mean, there's definitely life forms out there. I personally believe that there are conscious yeah, yeah. intellectual beings. Amongst the infinity that keeps expanding, I would yeah, I would probably totally, think that's true. Totally. But what about like uh, things coming here? Oh, yeah, for sure. You think um, so? Oh, yeah, for sure. There's, yeah, definitely. Roswell, New Mexico. Like... The, it's all cover, cover up. So you enjoy this kind of... <laughs> I love 
love it. I love conspiracy theories. But do you have anything that's ever personally happened to you? Um... I don't know. I mean, it's like you see stuff in the sky sometimes and you're like, is that a UFO? I don't know. Could be aliens. One time. But. I will tell you. <laughs> yeah, tell me. I haven't told a lot of people this. and tell and, me and after I've said this, uh-huh. uh, apparently people will know. Mm-hmm. I, I really haven't told many people about this, but. Everyone's going to know. Tell I was, me all your I was in New Hampshire. <laughs> it was late at night. Uh-huh. I, I was alone. Uh-huh. Um. I was in an apartment. Uh-huh. I think I went outside to like smoke a cigarette. Right. And I saw something come across like the sky. And right. It, it was completely silent. Yeah. It was just in like a V shape. Yep. But it had um, little red dots. Right. Right. Like uh, dots like that you could make out that it was a V. That's it. Right. It was completely silent, and it flew over me, uh-huh. and I ran off the porch, uh-huh. and I chased it down the street until yes. I, and it was completely silent the whole time, and then right. it just vanished away, and and I was like, you know, kind of like, what what just happened? What the fuck was that? So yeah. that, that, that really happened to me, and I actually was like, you know, at the time, like, I was like, Weather, weather balloons. Like what? What mm-hmm. was I? What did I see? Mm-hmm. And to this day, like, because it was, and I, when I mean silent, I just like saw that, and I looked up, and I chased it, and there was no sound. Right. It was very weird. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that and happened. The, and that like V shape with the red lights that you just described—that's yeah. been seen. Okay. On camera, like you can YouTube it, and I it's feel the same very weird shape. saying it. There's a reason I haven't said you it. You saw aliens. Yeah, I said I saw aliens. Yeah, own it. It's they very... exist. <laughs> Anybody the who doesn't think aliens not... exist is ignorant. They're just ignorant. Oh you know? yeah, but like to to <laughs> say they've come to Earth. Like when I saw that, I still to this day. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget that. It was very weird to see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I. I have a theory that we are just like human beings in general are this like giant social experiment for alien life forms out there and like different alien life forms. Have you ever watched like Prometheus? Is no, that, I haven't. Oh, you should just go watch that watch it. and be completely entertained for like a month. Because you'll probably rewatch it like 10 times. <laughs> yeah. It's like that. <laughs> Prometheus. Okay, I'll have to check that out. Yeah, it's like but, the sequel to Aliens or something. Okay, because I've seen Aliens and I've seen like the Predator and like Aliens versus Predator. It's and not like and... action like that, but it's right. like more like mm-hmm. humans are, you know, placed here. I just for... threw out a bunch of alien documentary like exciting DVD things that I <laughs> Why? Because you're moving? Because I'm moving and I need to get rid of stuff and I don't need it anymore and I yeah, haven't right. watched them in like three years. We so can't like, bring not? these here to the, <laughs> this humble place where you're relocated. <laughs> this, this, these need to go, these alien conspiracy DVDs need to go to somebody else so I can get new ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm upgrading. <laughs> no, that's, um, that's interesting. You like conspiracies. <laughs> I do. They're fun. I don't really feed into them too much or like buy into them too much, but they're fun to like just, you well, know, think cons- about. Aliens is definitely just a, a human, more human thing to just to think about right. and ponder. Right. Totally. Um, AI is a, that's a whole thing. That's, that's a real not, thing that's happening. Like, and there's proof. <laughs> it, yeah, there's proof and there's you know, there's weird things happening, but. What can you do, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, <laughs> It's uh, it's a different question than aliens. Aliens is mm-hmm. like you know the great beyond and things that, that that have been there. Yeah, and then people get really sensitive about like you know God and everything. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. definitely true. For some reason, they think that God can't exist if aliens do or something, which is yeah, unreal to me. So. Yeah, that's unreal. <laughs> it should make more sense that aliens would exist. Right. <laughs> right. Any other um, conspiracies? Oh, I mean, nine eleven was an inside job, you know. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I like, I just, I like to just listen to all the different things. Oh, the flat Earth people. Yes, that's a fun one. Okay, I but- don't particularly believe that the Earth is flat. I believe that we live in a round Earth, a well, globe. Thank you. Um, Good. 
However, there was that documentary on Netflix recently that they did, and it was very entertaining. About the flat watch. earth. Yeah, did you watch it? Have you oh, seen God, it? Oh, God, no. Yeah. I don't honestly know if I could, if it was entertaining <laughs> enough, I could watch it, but. I mean, it was entertaining for me because I'm just like sitting there the whole time, like, you know. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, you people are fucking crazy. But people believe this. Totally. They believe it. They're oh. trying to prove it. I know. They want to go to the ice wall. The end. <laughs> the end. The end it of the planet. Exist. It doesn't exist. Yeah, they did this one uh, experiment on that documentary where they like tried to, um, they put one of those uh, measuring things that they measure roads with, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's like a laser, basically, that goes from, like, one spot to the next. And it's supposed to measure curves in the road or the earth or whatever. So that's what those guys are doing. Mm-hmm. Right. So they did that, and they were trying to prove that the earth was flat, but they actually proved that the earth was round. Oh. And then they were like, like shit. ooh, that didn't work. Cut the know? tape. <laughs> yeah. Cut the tape. Exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll edit this out later. Yeah. yeah. All right. But the, so that documentary was funny. Oh, That's yeah. a good one. So Flat Earthers are interesting. they literally accidentally proved the, the yeah, earth. Was, yeah, and they still think that the earth is flat. So, well, yeah. hey, I mean, it's like, I mean... To be honest, it's kind of like the AI thing because mm-hmm. we haven't seen anything. Right. There's no proof. There's no, well, I mean, right. right. Like, and there's, like as a scientist, you know, you kind of want proof. But yeah. I think that's why conspiracy theories are fun because there there really is no proof. And there's like, there's lots of things on this earth and in this world and like spirituality and, you know, metaphysics and everything that you really, it's, you can't really prove it. You just have to kind of take a leap of faith and go with it, you know? Is bread similar to that? I think so, because it's a living organism in itself that cannot be, like, fully controlled. You can kind of um, train it or, like, guide it to where you want it to go. Yeah. But in the end, I mean, it's its own organism, and it's going to do what it wants to do, Yeah. you know? So that's... uh, But, yeah, I mean, it's definitely... I talked to my bread, and that usually helped it do oh, yeah. what I wanted it to do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this is like a real thing, uh-huh. but I keep. Um, I mean, I'm just gonna say it because yeah. I keep. I keep thinking about it a couple yeah. times now. When you go, uh-huh. and I just am envisioning this like plot of land. Right. And I know that's the dream. Yeah. But I think it may happen. Yeah. If it does, uh-huh. I have this like. Um, I think. People used to cook like or bake bread on like rocks, like yes. outdoors. Yes. And I'm like, I think that you should really try that. Mm-hmm. Is that a thing? Totally. It's a thing. And those hearth ovens, I mean, Odd Duck has one in their kitchen. Okay. Um, so and I'm, it's like, it's a brick, it's basically like brick igloo. Okay. And you can bake pizzas in there, you can bake bread in there, you know, you can bake everything. I mean, you can use it as a regular oven. But people but, used to make, like, flatbread outside. Yeah, like, outside, just on the rocks and stuff. I mean, I'm sure they still do it in India, yeah. you know? Oh, I'm sure somewhere they're yeah. doing that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. India, I also, keep thinking one that. place that I you asked where I wanted to go. India yeah. has always been a place that I really, really want to go. Cool, cool. Yeah. I want to spend, like, three to six months in India. Yeah. Yeah. Just get engulfed. Yeah. Cool. But not in the city, like out in the mountains, you know? Yeah. I don't want to be in the city. I think it would depress me, but yeah. be out in the mountains. Yeah. So all these plans, I mean, you're obviously, mm-hmm. you're moving with your, your boyfriend, but your boyfriend is a new, new... It's a new thing, but you know, when you meet the one, you just know. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's, <laughs> that's, that's pretty. Yeah. He's uh, he's legit. He's awesome. He's, uh, he. I met this guy and I was like, damn, okay, this is why I've never settled before, you know? Oh, and I've cool. never like, just like been like, yeah, settled. Like I never, I, I never settled before. That's cool. Yeah. So all these plans maybe and getting eaten, eaten by aliens and uh, AI, <laughs> they involve him, like traveling to India. Definitely, definitely. And we he's on board to, with the traveling. He's totally on board. I told him I wanted to go live in an ashram for three months at least in India, and he was like, cool, I'll take my dirt bike and I'll go on a <laughs> dirt bike trip while you okay, go cool. live in an ashram. And I was right. like, that's awesome. So, uh, yeah, he's totally down. I mean, he wants all the same things that I want. Um, he wants to travel. He he has an old dog just like I do. I mean, it's great. It's great. He's nice. great. Yeah. Nice. Well, cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
Chef Dylan Cleary <laughs> and Paul Shut. depart shortly. <laughs> Seventy-two yes. hours. By the time this is going up, uh, Chef Dylan will be on her way. Yeah, yeah, I'll be on the road to a newfound uh, glory. To the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. No, I would. I'm sure me and many people who are listening wish you very well. Thank you. Thank Please you. Please listen back. Please come back. Yes, definitely. I will be back to Austin. Uh, definitely have a home here. Have family here. I've been um, uh, drilling this home that there's no pressure doing this. Mm-hmm. But if you come back, it will be pretty Oh, I will cool. for sure come back and drink and chat with you some more. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. Thank yes, you. Thank you. Cool. Cheers. <laughs>